cool beans. Let's go. Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, we gotta do a second investigation for this trial. Oh, this room. It's been too long. It hasn't changed in the slightest, though. And it's been some six months, hasn't it? That's a long time for things to stay so familiar. I didn't know when you might return, and I wanted everything to be as you'd left it. But it has been some six months, it's true. So is your father alright, Susie? What happens? Hey Rico, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! It's payday for me! Woohoo! My father? Yes, Professor Mikotoba. I mean, it was half a year ago, but that's why you went back to Japan. Because of the telegram you received saying he'd fallen ill with a very high fever for some unknown reason. That's right. So I was surprised to learn you'd be coming back so soon. Surprised, but happy. I think I wrote about it in my letter to you. That it was all a trick. My father is in fine health, and I'm obviously very relieved about that. Well, we're all delighted to have you back. It's quite by accident that I've been able to return to Europe, actually. It's because of a very grand conference called the International Forensic Science Symposium. Yeah, I thought Susato would appear there. Like, I thought- I didn't think she would appear in this case at all. The International Forensic- that's the same symposium Lord Strongheart mentioned. Anyway, I've arrived safe and sound, and all that matters is that I'm here now. After all, I haven't yet fulfilled my promise to you, Iris. Oh! You must tell us everything that happened while you were back in Japan. Yes, of course, I shall. And there's one other thing. Something you wrote in your letter that particularly grabbed my attention. About you-know-who. About Kazuma. Did we read this letter? I don't think we did. When are they gonna kiss? Yeah, I'm wondering if they're um, Phoenix Wright's great-great-grandparents or something. Hey, Smith, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday! I know. I'll tell you all that I can. Uh, before we talk to her, I need to investigate this shovel! Thinking back, that spade's been here since we first moved in, hasn't it? I'm sure I've told you before, Mr. Nadahodo. That's not a spade, it's a shovel. No, shovels are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a spade. No, spades are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a shovel. The Great Spade Shovel War rages on. Did I not get the thing? Okay, I guess there's one more shovel to um, investigate. Uh, converse. Back in Britain. When I first arrived back in Japan, I really thought I'd never be allowed to return to Britain. But curiously, after that awful trial at the Supreme Court, Father's mood changed entirely. The awful trial? Oh, yes. For the murder of Giselle Brett. Ooh, you dressed as a man then, didn't you, Susie? Oh, well, yes. Since women are forbidden in the courtroom, I had no choice. Wow, amazing! I wish I'd seen it, don't you, Runa? Um, yes, I suppose so. I want to play at being a lawyer now. I could wear a false mustache, maybe. I don't think any mustache could hide the fact that you're just 10 years old, Iris. Also, your bright pink hair. There's something else I've been wanting to ask you, Mr. Sato. It's about the real reason why Professor Mikotoba summoned you back to Japan. He said in your letter it was something to do with that convict's loot we found in Mr. Natsume's lodgings. That's right. The very large dog collar we found with the B emblem on it. It seems Mr. Natsume included a drawing of the collar in the report he submitted about his time in Britain. I understand that when Father saw the report, he turned as white as a sheet. Why would that be then? Father came to Britain himself, of course, to study. It was some time ago now, but he stayed for six years. I can only imagine that something must have happened during that time. But if he refuses to tell me what it was, then I intend to find the answers for myself. And I've decided that I, for one, won't keep any more secrets. Oh, Susie. That's a very meaningful look Susato-san's giving Iris there. Oh, because... Did we... Actually, we didn't tell her about her dad. Well, we think he's her dad. At least they can agree on ladders and step stools. But Gande? I have to... Yeah, remind me. I need to um, examine that if we ever go back to Batum to Spells. Forensic Science Symposium. Lord Strongheim mentioned something about that symposium, too. I think he said that investigative authorities from 40 different countries would attend. 
Yes, and from Japan, my father and Judge Jikoku have been invited. Really, the judge also. Impressive. It's something of an honor, I believe. Well, Professor Mikotobe is the leading expert in forensic medicine in our country, after all. But who's the other person you mentioned? A judge, did you say? Yes, His Excellency Judge Seishiro Jikoku. You've met him, Mr. Mar Naruhodo. Last year in the Supreme Court. Can't possibly have forgotten. That terrible trial of yours when you were accused of murder. Ah, yes, I try to think of that as a positive turning point in my life these days. Battle of the Beard! Judge Beards, go! Well, it was Judge Jikoku who presided over that trial. If I'm perfectly honest, I'd be happy never to see that man's face again in my life. Oh, well, anyway, as father was invited to the symposium, he agreed to me returning to Britain, too. He won't actually arrive until next month, but, well, I couldn't wait. So I pleaded with him, and in the end, he agreed to me going on ahead. Yes, about the symposium. It seems as though Lord Strongheart has put in an awful lot of work to make it happen. It's obviously very important. I believe it is, yes. As I understand it, Lord Strongheart organized the entire event himself. I think he's hoping that by achieving exceptional results, he'll get the job of Attorney General. The most senior position in the British justice system. He's hoping to use his power to create the world's finest policing institution. That's what Father said anyway. Apparently, it's Lord Strongheart's lifelong ambition. Does Professor Mikotoba know Lord Strongheart personally then, I wonder? Actually, Lord Strongheart gave me a long speech all about the very subject only yesterday. But I sort of lost the will to live early on and didn't really listen to much of it. How trying for you. Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett. The woman whose unforgivable actions ended in me wrongly accused of a crime I didn't commit. The murder of Dr. John H. Wilson. Yes, Giselle Brett. I still don't know what that's a pun for. Because everyone's name is a pun. I still can't figure hers out. Have some cool news? What's up, Smooth? The extraordinary thing is, though, it seems it's a name we should all forget. Sorry? Since the incident, our government's intelligence services have been investigating Miss Brett. But it turns out that an Englishwoman by the name of Giselle Brett didn't actually exist. Didn't exist? But how can that be? It was a pseudonym. Her real name was Shin. So she's not even English! And she wasn't a visiting student either. That was a front. A front? Who who on earth was she then? Miss A. Shin. Uh, is she, uh, her name is literally all our intelligence services have been able to ascertain about her. Nobody knows why or even how she came to be in Japan. It's a complete mystery. But, but that makes no sense. It's no easy task to be accepted as a foreign student anywhere. What could the woman have been up to? I'm afraid I really don't know. The only thing we can be sure of is that she had some business in our country that we don't yet understand. And now she's been killed. While all the questions surrounding her existence remain unanswered. I'm afraid so. A Shin. Who on earth was she? And why do I feel as though I've heard that name before somewhere? I don't remember hearing it. I can play Monster Hunter Rising Got Switch that can be put on big screen. Congratulations! Man, I see so much Monster Hunter stuff, and I always think maybe I should get into it. But I, I know I'm going to lose interest, like, on the second day. So I'm just like, eh, let's not. What about Kazuma? After my friend Ray's trial, the reporter who actually killed Miss Brett said something very strange. Oh, many memo I remember. I know the truth. I know you had a hand in what went on. In that visiting strange fate. Nobody here in Japan knows anything about it. They don't know that the guy never made it to England, that he died on that steamship. And they'll never. Yeah, how does he know? Obviously, I couldn't ask him to elaborate at the time. But later I visited the man in his prison cell and asked him what he was going to say about Kazuma-sama. And what did you learn? After he died on the voyage to Great Britain. His body should have been unladen at the port of Hong Kong and passed into the care of the consulate staff there. Should have been? Well, it turns out that his body never arrived. Where's his body? It just disappeared. Did someone steal his corpse? What? Kazuma's body vanished? 
Our government tried to cover up the fact cover the fact up, it seems. They erected a grave on the cliffs by our hometown. Except Kazuma-sama isn't there. Did did Professor Mikotoba know about this? Yes, it would seem that he did. But he didn't tell me. They're still investigating what happened to Kazuma-sama's body as we speak. I just don't believe it. And what is this acute feeling of apprehension I have all of a sudden? <sighs> That's because you need to play it with friends, we should all play it. Yeah... I, games would be a lot more fun with friends. Especially Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> I still have to finish leveling up my NPCs, uh... Thinking back now, some of the things that happened on the SS Buria were definitely strange. I mean, after he died, we never saw his body again, did we? Could it be? Could it be that he's actually still alive? What? 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 Did I read that right? He's actually still alive? Stop it, Mr. Nadahodo. It's too much to bear. I'm sorry. Whoa. Oh my gosh, Lydia! Thank you for the raid! How have you been, girl? I hope you've been well. <laughs> We're raiding now. Deal with us. Happy Thursday, you guys. I'm always on 14, you dingus. Yeah, but I don't think you're on when I'm on, and I'm not on a lot. Uh, hey, Kenny, long time to see. I hope you've been well too, dude. Oh my gosh, your emote is so freaking cute. Yan Yan Raid. Hey, girl, I hope you've been well. Air hugs. Oh, man, your emote game is so good. I need to up my emotes. Ugh. I'll get the anti-raid tanks. <laughs> good to see you guys. I hope you guys have been well. Yeah, I hope you guys had a good stream. What did you guys play? Just thinking about the possibility pains me so very much. Cast your mind back for a moment, Mr. Nadohoro. When Kazuma-sama was discovered, Mr. Sholmes was there, wasn't he? And he definitely examined the body. I remember it clearly. Ah, you're... you're right. So if Kazuma hadn't actually been dead at all, it would mean that Mr. Sholmes had lied to us. But there's no reason why he would possibly have done such a thing. I... I suppose that's true, yes. Yes, there's no reason for him to lie to us. The idea that he might still be alive somewhere. It wants to fill me with hope, but I can't let it, because if it turned out not to be true... ...then I'd be back at the bottom of that awful pit of despair again. I'm... I'm terrified of what that might do to me. Wow, she really liked Kazuma. We played Fall Guys, then I got read it by Lily Taiga. Oh wow, Fall Guys. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Is it still fun? Do a lot of people still play? Because if they do, that's awesome. Oh, Miss Susato. I know she's given the idea the thought it deserves. It's Susato san we're talking about after all. So I probably shouldn't push it now. Okay, so I think that's it. I still can't move though, so am I supposed to... Hmm. Am I supposed to present anything to her? I'm pretty sure we're all done talking. Yeah. Hmm. Is there something else I can inspect? Ah! Okay, I'll talk to Iris. I got filled with hope, but then I got filled with despair. It looks like she played Danganronpa. Huh? What does that mean? <laughs> I still have to play Danganronpa! But it is Sholmes. But I don't... Like, I know Sholmes isn't right 100% of the time, but I feel like it's the very first time we met him. There's no reason for him to lie to us. Because... Yeah, we didn't know anything about each other by then. Unless he knew that... Well, he has to have known that Wilson was in Japan. Because if I'm thinking who I think he is... And yeah, they're friends, so they have to keep tabs on each other, but like... Did he know which school we were part of? Hmm. I only ever played the original Phoenix, right? Oh man, you should play all of them. They're so great. 
and I love Great Ace Attorney because I love the art style, but like they have this little thing called uh, deduction stuff. I don't remember the actual name of it because I always call it just deducing, but it's fun and it's cute. It must be about a year ago now. I read a really long story based on some of my father's old notes. It's about one of Hurley's great exploits. I call it the Bas Hound of the Baskervilles. But then Mr. Sholmes forbade you from publishing it. And put the manuscript somewhere nobody could get their hands on it. So nobody knows anything about it, apart from Hurley and I. But for some reason... You knew the title of it, didn't you, Susie? It sounds very exciting. The hundred basket fills. I should love to read it. And you wouldn't tell me how you'd come to know it. Yes, but I made you a promise that I would explain one day, didn't I? I think it's time. <gasps> Ooh. I'm only sorry I'd have to keep it from you so for so long, Iris. The Hound of the Baskervilles. It was completely by accident that I came to know the title of your manuscript, Iris. It was a short while before we left Japan. I was cleaning Father's study and I saw something on his writing desk. A large box of papers. There was a label affixed to the box that was written in English. It read, The Hound of the Baskervilles. What? My Baskerville story? Of course, I had no idea what it was at the time. But Father came in and... Sister, what are you doing? Did you look at those papers? No, I simply read the label, that's all. Well, put it out of your mind. Sorry? Forget that you ever saw it, and certainly don't tell anybody else about this. Do you understand? So I actually don't know anything about it, okay. But what was Iris's manuscript doing in Japan? I have no idea. But when I heard Iris mention the word Baskerville that day, the title just slipped out. I would never have guessed that it was an unpublished account of one of Mr. Sholmes' exploits. When I returned to Japan, I asked Father to explain, but he refused to answer any of my questions, and there was no sign of the big box in his office. That's really all I know about it. I've no doubt that Father has a very good reason for being so secretive about it, but still. I made up my mind to explain myself to both of you. Well, thank you for being so honest, Susie. So, Mr. Nadohoro, I'm ready to start investigating if you are. I've committed every detail about the case to memory. And Iris has told me about the disturbing happenings at the Waxwork Museum as well. So, you're fully abreast of the situation already, Mr. Sato. I'd expected nothing less, to be honest. I would think our first port of call should be to investigate this Mr. Drebber. The engineer responsible for building the elaborate machine that was used to the effect to effect this extraordinary trick. Yes, a conjurer of sorts, by the sound of it. Well known in the fields of science and magic. Then we need to go and arrest him. Well, yes. He must know the truth behind the case, so I agree we really do need to find the man. Hmm, it sounds like it's a case of tracking someone down. Which is a job for the police, or a great detective. Are we supposed to guess who she might be thinking of? We don't have much time, so we need to get started straight away, I think. Good idea. Well, best of luck then. Oh, you're not coming today? I'm going to Brixton Road shortly for the herd market. Let me know later how you got on, won't you? That was a little abrupt. The pull of the herb market must be strong. Okay, so my thoughts now, because we're talking about Hound of the Baskervilles, and I didn't realize that the thing that we found in the previous trial was a dog collar. So that has to be connected. Do, do we remember like where we got that? Oh, is it not now that we examine it? Uh, let's see. Oh, she's such a lot of stick figures all lined up. Look. Cheap apples at the market is what all of them say. What? These little figures can speak? 
All your questions would be answered if only you would read this month's Rants magazine. So I'm the only one who can't make any sense of this. I got her lock in! No more examining her billboard. Okay, um... I'm gonna go to two spells first. So what could the hound case possibly have been? That they don't let Iris publish it. There was a bloody dog collar. Hmm, that's probably gonna be like the next case that we uh, solve then. Oh my, no wonder it's called the House of Horrors. I'd like to turn on my heels and go straight home via the confectionery. Being scared makes you crave sweets? I could understand that. I was looking forward to a reunion after six months away, but... There's no sign of Mr. Sholmes anywhere. That's strange. He should be here investigating the abduction of the waxwork. Oh well, I suppose we'll just have to come back again later. No. We examine... The ladder! Ah, there's a stepladder there, look! Oh, yes, a stepladder. I think perhaps we should let the proprietress know that someone's left it out. The stepladder, I mean. Is something wrong? Why do I feel as though I just managed to sidestep an argument? Got the ladder! Okay, so I guess I'm not supposed to be here yet? If Madame Toospell isn't here? Okay. So we'll move... Um, experimentation stage? Because we can examine the machine now. There's a puppy! I had no idea there were so many people in the world. I know what you mean. It's really packed here today. It feels as though it's taken us two hours just to make our way through the crowds to this point. Has it? I shut my brain down so I didn't really notice, to be honest. Gosh, I do wish I had your absence of mind sometimes, Mr. Nadohodo. There you are. I had a feeling you lot would show your mugs before long. I don't know who's talking yet. Ah, uh, Gregson. Oh, Inspector Gregson, I see you're hard at work as usual. Warm greetings to you. I do hope you've been keeping well since last we met. Why is he being so nice? What's with all the ceremony? We just saw each other in court this morning. Not you, Sunshine. The gentlewoman so loyally at your side. Oh. Why, thank you, Inspector. How good of you to notice. He might be a bit rough around the edges, but he's still a proper English gentleman at heart, I suppose. As you've probably guessed, we were hoping to investigate the scene some more. Right, well, that's the young trainee's domain. Oi, get over here, Jada! But she's playing with the puppy! Look at the little puppy boy! She seems to be busy playing with the puppy, probably giving it a traditional East End training. Gina? She's a police officer now? Amazing, isn't it? She's a good kid, actually. Heart's in the right place anyway. She's got a detection bug, if you ask me. Yep, I think she'll follow in my footsteps nicely. What do you mean? I'm being transferred. It's time for me to say toodaloo to London. Oh no, really? That's... that's a bit sudden, isn't it? I had no idea. Where are you going to be posted then? We'll come see how you're getting along. Haha, <laughs> not likely, but you're welcome to try. If you don't mind a trip to France, that is. To France? I'll be working in the Paris Police Prefecture. Should be right up my alley. But... but France? It's an entirely different country. I don't understand. Why would you be sent there? That's the way the adult world, world works, Sunshine. Now don't go poking your nose into where it's not wanted. Well, seriously, why France? Why all of a sudden? I'm intended to take the kid with me when I go. You're taking Gina? To Paris? Well, can't leave her in London. Who knows what become of her? I suppose he's worried she'd slip back into slipping her hands into people's pockets and purses. I don't think he's worried about her pickpocketing, Mr. Nadohodo. I think he's worried about the Reaper. Oh, of course. So that's playing on Inspector Gregson's mind too, is it? Anyway, I haven't mentioned any of this to Gina. So don't go blabber, you hear me? N no, of course not. I've got to keep that diamond diva safe and sound. Until all this is over, at least. Did she hear us? Oi, you just call me a blooming diva, diving diva again! So you heard that, did you? Right, well, any questions about the scene? You can put them to my capable detective diva here. 
He cares about her! They're buddy cops! Alright, you're at the boss! Inspector Lestral's in charge here now! I suppose I'd better keep my word and not mention anything about Paris. So, um, Gina, you've got a new dog, have you? Oh, he's so cute! Hey, great! Toby's his name! Oh, how delightful! He's absolutely adorable! Yes, the dog seems lovely. But it's not so lovely Inspector Gresson that's playing on my mind, to be honest. Does Gina not care about Susato? It's like, hey, Susato, it's been a long time. Hi. Um, should I examine or converse first? Let's examine. There's a fist fight with a dog happening behind the people talking. No, she's just playing with the pupper. Here's the scorching on the ground that you mentioned. Yes, and there's what's left of the green balloon's envelope. All clear evidence of the balloon that exploded on the day of the incident. Poor Professor Hairbrain. I do feel sorry for him that his dreams have been shattered like this. Someone's well and truly burst his bubble, as it were. Ha 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 ha! Ouch. I'm a bad person. No, you're not. Okay, don't need to examine the scorch marks. I don't think I need to examine the tower again. Hmm. Yeah, let's just talk with uh, Gina. Investigating the scene. Um, Gina, we were actually hoping that we could investigate the scene again. Yeah, all right. It's around there. You can do what you like. Oh, that's all right, is it? <gasps> I'll be playing with my new friend here. Ah, oh, yes, Toby. Ah, he's so cute. The machine that exploded must be at the top of those stairs, I presume. I haven't actually seen it yet, so if you don't mind... Sorry, can't go up there, Suze. Oh. It's like I told Odo yesterday. Even I ain't allowed near that wreck. What's it called again? The reason we ain't supposed to touch it? The special... Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act? Is that what you were thinking of? That's the one. That's why only the lot are allowed to investigate it. What are they called again? The Forensic something... The Forensic Investigation Team? Is that what you were thinking of? That's the one, yeah! But isn't, isn't the case that the Special Dispensation has been lifted? I think so. Don't really get it, to be truthful, Lizia. you? Still supposed to get permission from some bigwig or other, as far as I know. What was his name again? Mm, Lord Strange something... I'm not sure that's quite right, Gina. I think you mean Lord Strongheart, perhaps? That's the one, yeah! Apparently, he's always watching the time or something. So without Lord Strongheart's express permission, we can't investigate on the stage. Okay, so let's finish talking with Gina, and then we could go visit Strongheart. That was great, weren't it? I had a right laugh! It was a new one on me, that. You know, being in court and not spending the whole time worrying, I'm about to be found out. You did keep an awful lot of secrets in all your previous court appearances, didn't you? Yeah, and Odo's made a, a things hard for me every si single time at all. I can read. Just doing my job, Gina. Watching someone else get in the neck is a lot of fun, actually. It was amazing when you showed that dodgy professor's dodgy experiment was a total fix! The dodgy professor, as you put it, Gina, is Mr. Naruto's client. Yes, I'm starting to wish he wasn't, though. It's the boss I feel sorry for. Sometimes I do the impossible. What do you mean? He's supposed to arrest that other cove, ain't he? And in time for a trial. And in time for tomorrow and all. You know, the dodgy engineer. What's his name again? Mr. Drebber, you mean. Enoch Drebber. Enoch Drebber. Enoch Drebber. I, I don't know what that's a pun for either. Enoch Drebber. Enoch Drebber. Mm -hmm. That's the one, yeah. So the police are looking for this mysterious man with the black monocle. I guess they would be. It's putting too much on the boss, if you ask me. He says it's giving him a gut ache. Oh dear, but I do wonder if that isn't actually from all the fried food. The engineer's whereabouts. So Scotland Yard are trying to tag that, track down Mr. Enoch Drebber. I wonder if they've had any luck. It's real funny looking. Got two eyes but don't match. Still a glimpse of a picture of him earlier. I mean, I didn't actually pinch it or nothing. The old devil's got it. Sorry? Who? You know, that Scallum Reaper what's always slugging down glasses of that blood red plonk. Ah, Lord Van Zeeks. 
It's always added in for me, that cove. Don't know what he's always scowling about, mind. Probably would have been a pretty good boss, as it goes. She'd rather be the Reaper's apprentice than a detective's trainee. The way I see it, if the choice is between a chip guzzling detective and a chalice glugging demigod. <laughs> demigod! You're equally badly with off with both. I suppose you're right. I hadn't thought of it like that. Glad we put that one to bed. Anyway, the point is, everyone at the yard's dead set on finding the fishy engineer. But they don't seem to be no clues to go on, so they're stuck. There's nothing that can lead us to Jebber at all. Well, that's why we probably have to visit the prison and talk to... Albert. Where did you find that little mutt then, Gina? Oi, don't be flaming rude, Otto. Slight overreaction, don't you think? He ain't no mutt, all right. Toby's... how they put it? <gasps> oh yeah, a bone fine detective. Sorry. I've given him a proper title and everything. As Chief Inspector Toby to you. More senior than Inspector Gregson, is he? <gasps> he's so cute. Oh, so he's a police dog, is he? The police recruit dogs now. I've heard that they're already using... Already being used officially in Germany as part of their city policing. I can read. They're used for chasing criminals and such like. They have a wonderful sense of smell after all. I have a fairly good sense of smell myself, that happens. I can tell undergarments that have been freshly laundered from undergarments that haven't. That, hmm. I don't know if that's a skill you necessarily want to have or share. <sighs> that's nothing compared to this little fella, Otto. Oh, really? According to what the boss said. <gasps> He's so cute! Once Toby here's got a good whiff of your jaws, he could chase that scent to the other side of the world. What? To the other side of the world? Okay, so we're probably gonna have to get some kind of cloth of Enoch's, have Toby chase him, and then we'll find him. Hold on now. What? What happens? He can swim? Mr. Nadahodo, I think you have made missed the point by rather a war by rather a wide margin. I just can't believe this little dog has such an incredible skill. I'm telling you, Odo, there's going to be more and more dogs doing their bit for the police in future. Yes, I agree. Why? Right. One of these days, they'll be barking orders at us, well, not the other way around. Oh dear. Sorry, Gina. I don't think I agree with your vision quite that much. Well, anyway, whatever you think about that, Toby here is Britain's first police dog. I found him down the East End the other day. Someone had just chucked him out on the street. There you go. I knew she'd lifted him from somewhere. Oh, Gina, you're such a kind-hearted soul, aren't you? To children and to animals. Okay, so we're gonna move to Justice Office. Whoa, hello! Who are you? Oh, who's that standing beside Lord Strongheart? I wonder. I've never seen her before. Ah, oh, the young champion of the court. He had some success this morning, I understand. And you've thrown the entire government into disarray as a result. Oh, you mean because of Professor Harebrain's experiment? Sham science being demonstrated at London's Great Exhibition. The country's been made to look foolish, and now politicians are scrabbling to respond. Lord Van Zeek sits in Whitehall as we speak, giving an emergency briefing. Oh dear, I am... Um, didn't mean to cause any trouble. None of this is your responsibility. The government is entirely to blame for having been taken in. The special dispensation that prevents investigation at the scene will be annulled later today. Once that happens, my forensic investigation team will move in and deal with that scrap metal in no time. It's scrap metal now, is it? Uh, are you a man or a woman? Until later then, Lord Strongheart's. Yes, thank you. She's right, Lassie. Um, who was that? That was Dr. Courtney Scythe, Scotland Yard's esteemed chief coroner. Oh, okay. That was the name on the autopsy, so it's a woman. She's leading the forensic investigation team's handling of this case. She was just delivering her report about the victim, in fact. 
Oh, I see. About Mr. Asman. Following the outcome of the trial earlier, I asked the coroner's office to reevaluate its findings. I don't have time to tell you what she concluded. If you want to know, you'll have to ask her directly. You can find her in the forensics laboratory. Ah, right. Now, what were you here to see me about? I can give you 7 minutes and 39 seconds of my time. So he's not running quite so spectacularly late anymore. Are we talking? We're talking. What exactly is the forensic investigation team that you mentioned before? The British Empire's police force must become the most exemplary in the world. For that to happen, it's imperative that we embrace forensic science and everything it has to offer. Ah, offer. I've created the forensic investigation team a year ago now. Unofficially, of course, to pave the way. Goodness, a year ago? At next month's symposium, I intended to present the results of their work to the world. Once I do that, the House of Lords will be powerless to oppose the creation of a full-scale forensics division. And once that happens, the position of Attorney General will be mine, and criminals will suffer dearly. What do you mean? For too long, the scoundrels have made a mockery of our legal system with false evidence and bribes. But London scum is about to be rounded up and burned to the files of hell. Very extreme. I intend to see to it personally. By creating the finest police force the world has ever known to protect our honor and our future. Look at those eyes. He means every word. Please don't turn out to be a bad guy in the end, dude. Dr. Scythe is an extremely reliable, reliable coroner. When I officially established the forensics division at Scotland Yard, she will run it as my right-hand woman. Now then, speaking of the symposium, Miss Mikotoa. Oh, yes, my lord? Your father should be on the high seas as we speak, making his way here to represent the Empire of Japan. Yes, that's right. I understand he will arrive at the beginning of next month. Are you acquainted, Lord Strongheart? With Professor Mikoto Baibin? It was many years ago now, but yes. I remember Dr. Mikoto very well. Another conversation topic, okay. If my memory serves, it was some 15 years ago now that your father came to Britain as a visiting student. It was the year I was born, so yes, 16 years ago in fact. Mikotoba was a young practitioner of forensic science, and Jigoku accompanied him as a young promising judge. The punctili- what? What? Punctiliousness? What the heck does that mean? I gotta look it up. Punctilious. Showing great attention to detail or correct behavior. Okay, so it's like, punctual. I've never heard of punctilious, that is interesting. And politeness of the Japanese at the time impressed us greatly. Not that I wish to imply impoliteness or carelessness on your part in any way. I didn't think that you were. Dr. Bikutuba studied forensics at one of London's large hospitals. Saint Sinners, if I'm not mistaken. Lovely name. Dr. Scythe was also there, then, as it happens. Then, Dr. Scythe knows my father, does she? She was a young medical assistant at the time, so I doubt their paths cross regularly. But I've no doubt they knew each other superficially. After all, Dr. Mikotoba was here studying his subject for some six years in total. Six years? That's a long time to be studying abroad, isn't it? I lived with my grandmother in those years. So he left his newly born daughter behind and went overseas for six whole years? It was a rather turbulent time at home. Oh, perhaps father wanted a reason to get away. What do you mean? Why? Oof. Well, clearly something was going on at the time, and we should not pry into it. Lord Van Zeeks. I wanted to ask you about Lord Van Zeeks, actually. I heard that his older brother was killed some years ago. By a mass murderer known as a professor who targeted nobles and royalty, is that right? You Japanese are a thorough lot. You've done your research well. Yes. And you could say that was that very incident that gave rise to the Reaper. What? Why? When his brother, Clint Van Zeeks, was murdered. It was just after young Barrack had graduated from the University of London and become a prosecutor. When obvious criminals who managed to evade conviction in court started disappearing, rumors quickly spread through the capital. Londoners started to say that wherever Barrack Van Zeeks went, the ghost of his dead brother wasn't far behind. Oh my word! 
So, Lord Van Seeks isn't the Reaper, it's the ghost of his brother? Ever since that time, he became a very aloof figure in London's legal circles. Hmm, interesting. Oh, yes, Lord Strongheart. Go ahead. It's about Professor Hairbane's experimental machine. We'd like your permission to examine the remains, if possible. Are you well versed in science, then? Not in the slightest. In fact, you could say I was barely aware of the subject at all until recently. Well, the special dispensation legally preventing inv investigation of the machine is currently being annulled. Within a few hours, Dr. Scythe's team of forensic experts will begin their own investigation. But I suppose until then, there's no harm in you looking at the wreckage as long as you touch nothing. Thank you. Being able to look at it is better than nothing. And I'll be able to see it too. Your time is up. You'll have to excuse me now, I'm afraid. My next engagement calls. We're extremely sorry to have troubled you when you are so busy, my lord. I have important matters to attend to in preparation for the symposium, you understand. No, I don't. But whatever. It was good to talk to you. Okay, now we go- a new location. Forensic laboratory. I don't think we have to go there yet. I think we go experimentation stage first. Mm -mm -mm. We probably have to examine the stairs to go back up. Oi! That's off limits up there! Try to sneak past me again I'll stuff your gob full of the boss's fish and chips. Yes, please. I love fish and chips. And free food. I suppose we need special permission. We just got the permission! What? We- Oh, okay. We have to converse with her. Whoa, how did I miss that? Um, Gina. We were actually hoping that we could investigate the scene again. Yeah, alright. If it's around here, you can do what you like. Oh, that's alright, is it? I'm gonna be playing with my new friend here. Ah, yes, Toby. <sighs> the machine that exploded must be at the top of those stairs, I presume. I haven't actually seen it yet, so if you don't mind... Sorry, can't go up there, Sus. Oh, wait, but I just talked to Starheart! Yeah, 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 We saw this earlier. Okay, I think this is a sign that we do have to go talk with Courtney Scythe first. Boo! Skip, 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 skip. Oh! Okay, we've we've seen him. Eh? You what? You've met him? Last time the boss called to go and see him, he waited for three hours at the co's office and came back sniveling. Tragic. Well, Lord Strongheart has given us permission to examine the scene as long as we touch nothing. Oh yeah? Honestly. Alright then, go ahead. But if it turns out you're lying, it'll be the boss who gets it. He'll never eat another chip again in his life. So, you're still saying this all the all this is above board, are you? I'm sure everything will be fine. That really would be tragic. Alright then, down the stairs. Off you go. Oh, thank you, Gina. Okay. What if I take a piece of evidence before um, the forensic team gets here? And then when I f they find out what I did, they're like, You're getting kicked out of London! Oh my, so this is the machine. I was used to deceive people into thinking instantaneous kinesis had taken place. Yes, that's right. Or rather, it was the machine. It's a little worse for wear at the moment. What extraordinary lengths Professor Harebrain went in order to obtain the research grant. No, no, no. The professor was tricked as well. He didn't know anything about it. Yes, of course. It's amazing though, isn't it? The scale of the whole affair is so very British. You're right about that. You never see such a grand deception in Japan, that's for sure. Would you? Would you really not? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, is that... What? Lord Van Zeeks? So, I think we're more or less done here, aren't we? Shelly, Mrs. Sato? Already? He is the Reaper, remember? But we do well to keep our distance, I think. We have permission to be here, from the top. We're perfectly well allowed to investigate this machine. As long as we don't touch anything. From the top? Do you mean Lord Strongheart? Exactly. So we can stay here and stare at this wreckage for as long as we'd like. 
She could have been at the center of the explosion here, and it wouldn't have bent her steel wheel. Uh, we gotta examine Barrack. <clears throat> uh, least approachable man in the world winner. <laughs> Ten years in a row. Be strong, Mr. Naruto. Your country and your assistants stand firm behind you. Um, Lord Van Zeeks. What? Um, well, beautiful weather we're having, isn't it? I thought I was making it quite clear that I didn't want to be disturbed. Apparently, you Nipponese are unequipped to read the signs. Oh, I read them. So, what are you doing here? Entry to this area is prohibited. Then how did you get in? Ah, well, the thing is... Lord Chief Justice Strongheart granted us permission to investigate. On the condition that we didn't disturb anything. And yet you've managed to disturb me. Ah! Never mind. State your business then. Come to think of it. There are quite a few things I'd like to ask Lord Van Zeeks about. Not least of which is that awful case, even though it's nothing to do with this. Ask away, Mr. Nadohodo. You won't know unless you try. We're really gonna ask him? Okay. I guess we are. Pretty toasty toes. Yes, I actually took time to dry my hair after showering today. Also, hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. Are you back at home or are you still with your family? On the East Coast. Your brother Clint. So, Clint was the name of your older brother, I understand. Lord Van Zeeks? You Nipponese. I always have to be on guard whenever you're around. So, you've been investigating me, have you? Oh, no, 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 it's not like that. Well, alright, it is a bit like that. My older brother was also a prosecutor. He was the pride of the Van Zeeks family. But tragically, a vicious killer took him from us. The professor, you mean? <laughs> is something funny? That's the extent of what you've discovered, is it? I shouldn't be surprised. Sorry? There's more to it then? Lackluster work is very much your trademark, isn't it? Ugh. You're too kind. Are you going to tar all Nipponese with the same brush next? So tell me, what's your interest in that historic incident? As it happens, Lord Van Zeeks, there's a rather curious case that's come to our attention. Are you aware of the Madame to Spells Museum of Waxwork by any chance? I am, naturally. I believe that since last month, I feature in one of the displays there, for public scorn. <sighs> I mean, yeah, you kinda were a jerk, though. Mm. Back in the Midwest and not in the LA area. One day, Kirby, our schedules will line up and we'll be able to hang out. Oh, nice, nice, you're back at home. Nice and comfy. Of course, the infamous Reaper of the Bailey would have, to, would have to be exhibited, wouldn't he? Well, a particular waxwork has been stolen from the place and held for ransom. A particular waxwork? Which... wait, you mean... Yes, it's the Professor. Mr. Sholmes is investigating the case as we speak. Virtual hugs and posture check. Thank you for the posture check. Ugh, I've been sitting so terribly this past week. My back hurts so much. And I've just been like creaking every time I stretch. It's no bueno. I was unaware of that. In bed. <laughs> Kirby! No. <laughs> He's turned as white as a sheet. Enoch Drebber. Are the police trying to locate the engineer, Mr. Drebber, already? Enoch Drebber, Enoch Drebber, Enoch Drebber, Enoch Drebber? Hmm, I don't know. Surely that goes without saying. We're very keen to see him found as well. The trouble is, we don't have much to go on aside from the description of the man we've heard in court earlier. Which, according to Professor Harebrain, was of a tall, thin gentleman who has straight white hair and wears a black monocle. So, I was just wondering. I mean, I realize it's probably not possible, but, um... We'd very much appreciate any more clues you could give us. 
Wow, Susasa-san really knows how to take the bull by the horns. Fine, why not? I have a photograph of the man here from an investigation ten years ago. Whoa! <laughs> he looks kind of scary. Nice haircut, thank you. See, if I dry my hair nicely, it looks presentable and respectable. If it's if I don't dry it, then it's just like a big poofy curly mess, and it ooh. Though it appears he had already had that black monocle at the time. What? Oh, no, nothing. I... I was just surprised that you shared that with us. We all need the man's testimony in court tomorrow. Which means we have to do everything we possibly can to track him down in the short time available. So why wouldn't I show you the photograph? What is it about Lord Van Zeeks? Sometimes I just can't work him out at all. The photograph of Drebber has been added. Curly toast or poofy toast? Definitely very poofy. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Birdman, you scared me! Ah, the file I requested for the trial tomorrow. Thank you. Are you alright? Oh, it's her first time seeing Birdman! Who, who is this man? <laughs> Mr. Naruto? Lord Fancy's apprentice, apparently. So I'm not the only one. Susasa-san can see it too. Um, Lord Van Zeeks, may we speak with your apprentice for a moment? With him? Why? His mask is creepy. Kazuma-sama- Ka? For real? Kazuma? I don't believe it. Your... your posture, your presence... It can only be... It's you, isn't it, Kazuma-sama? I felt something strange the very first time I encountered this cloaked figure. As if I knew him somehow. Can it... can it really be you, Kazuma? Where are you going? Wait! Too late. No! Go after him! What's going on here? That's the sign of a rock star. <laughs> I do like listening to rock. Jelly's favorite boy. If if that really is him. What is your interest in my apprentice exactly? You act as if you know the man or something. Well, um... Since when has he been in your care? I don't recall you having an apprentice before I left Britain six months ago. Lord Strongheart introduced him to me about three months ago now. With instructions to mentor him as a prosecutor. But he didn't tell you why, did he? The man appears to be suffering from amnesia. He's forgotten every last detail about himself. He has amnesia. Tomorrow he will appear in court at my side. What? He's to serve as my judicial assistant on Lord Strongheart's orders. He'll be in court with us. Now then, unless I'm much mistaken, I believe this conversation has run its course. Oh, yes, um, thank you. Yo! Is it really, Kazuma? That- Cause we came to Britain, like, a year ago? Yeah, because we were only there for six months and then Susato went home for six months, so it's been a year. Then who would have taken Kazuma's body? But he was only introduced three months- I definitely saw a reaction there. When Susato song called out like that, it really seemed to hit a nerve. When she called out Kazuma-sama. Okay, I guess that's it. 
Well, no. Now I'm gonna examine the machine. What a terrible explosion it must have been. Even the steel girders have buckled and twisted in the blast. And what they called the birdcage was right in the middle of it all, just here. But look, Mr. Nadohoro, that metal grill on the floor. Looks as though it's designed to open. It does, doesn't it? If the floor had opened at the precise moment the explosion occurred, the birdcage would have dropped through and disappeared from sight. I don't think there's any doubt that this is a very elaborate hoax, is there? Now we just have to examine the machine with this, like, tense music in the back. This wasn't here yesterday. Really? But if I'm not mistaken, it's the cage in which the victim was standing before he was apparently beamed through the air. That's right, the birdcage. According to what Professor Hairbrand said in court, it's made of wood. Or more precisely, Japanese cypress, I think. And despite having been in an explosion and then falling from such a great height, it's relatively unharmed. What wonderfully durable construction, wouldn't you say, Mr. Nadohodo? I'd understood that the forensic investigation team had taken it away yesterday to examine it. I suppose they must have brought it back here when they finished their work. But sadly, not with the body inside it. No, that's right. I know we were given strict instructions not to touch anything, but still. This is too important to a piece of evidence to overlook. We might need it for the trial. The birdcage has been- <laughs> We're taking the entire birdcage. Wait, that's it? He said he had something important to do. Wonder what it was. Hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering too. Because I don't think he's ever been to Britain before. So, what did Kazuma have to go to Britain to do? You'd already met that masked man, hadn't you, Mr. Nadohodo? Yes, yesterday in fact, at Lord Van Zeke's office. I see. And if... If Kazuma-sama really is still alive, it means that Mr. Sholmes lied to us. I know. We're going to need to speak to him about that. You're going to have to leave now. Huh? The forensic investigation team are due to arrive shortly. If they find you here, it will cause problems. What sort of problems? For foreign affairs problems. Well, we could do without that. All right, we'll be on our way. Let's go, Mr. Sato. Of course. Okay, so... First of all, uh, we're going to examine this cage. To see... Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, can I zoom in on that? That looks like blood. Is there anything I could examine? Oh, looks like it got crushed at the bottom. Ah, look here, Mr. Sato. Oh, yes, the wood's cracked and broken a little. I suppose it's because it fell from such a height. Yes, from the height at which the balloon was flying, down into the crystal tower below. A fall of about 30 feet, or 9 meters. Leaving the man inside tragically dead. Okay. Causing damage to its base. Is that all? Excuse me. Because there's... There's this red mark. Okay, well, I guess we can't do that now. The evidence got updated. We're gonna move. Um, let's go forensic laboratory first. Whoa. This is a pretty cool laboratory, actually. I believe this is it, Dr. Scythe's laboratory. That chemical smell really assaults the nose, and there's plenty to assault the eyes in here, too. It looks as though the doctor isn't here. But we're here now, so we may as well do some sightseeing, don't you think? What a seasoned tourist you've become, Mrs. Sato. We could just have a look around, being careful not to upset any restless souls. I'm gonna examine the birds! That looks like an owl and a crow up there. I know, and they haven't even twitched since we came in here. Well, no, they wouldn't have. They're taxidermy mounts, Mr. Nadhodo. Ugh, I was afraid you were going to say that. I've been trying very hard to tell myself they're just sleeping with their eyes open. Yes, I think perhaps you're wise to put something like your Dadoma doll on display in the office instead. Yo, does anyone in Animal Crossing have a lucky cat recipe? Please, if you have a spare or if you have a villager that um that is doing it, please let me know. I've been looking for a lucky cat forever. Ugh. 
Well, look at this. What a magnificent display case. The cherry wood has been polished to a high sheen, and the intricate carving is a joy to behold. Western cabinet makers really are very skilled, aren't they? Do you have nothing to say about the skeleton inside, Mr. Narahono? Mrs. Atu. Can't you tell that I'm trying very hard to avoid talking about the terrifying contents of the case? It's how I cope! I'll be sure to remember that from now on. Mm, nothing to investigate for the files... Desk. I suppose this is Dr. Scythe's desk. Ugh, I would not like to work in a place like this. It's very tidy though, isn't it, Mr. Narahodo? Imagine how efficiently she must work. The lighting is poor, which is bad for the eyes, and the chemical smell can't be good for you. Not to mention the skeleton watching over you as you work, which is definitely bad for the nerves. Well, yes, those are valid concerns, I suppose. I can just about cope with a one-eyed Daruma doll watching over me, but that's all. Okay... This cart. Look at all the bottles on, on the shelves in these cabinets. What an assortment of chemicals. These ones here are labeled highly toxic. Ugh, that's worrying, because there are also things that look like salt and pepper shakers in there. Oh yes, and they actually say salt and pepper on them. The doctor probably spends a lot of time in this room, I suppose. Perhaps she has meals here sometimes. Life goes on, even when you're surrounded by death. How true, how true. I can't examine the blood on here, cool. I have to start all over? Really? Why? Start your entire island over? That seems like such a waste. Just like move all your villagers onto the beach and then just level your island and then build up from that. Unless you want to change the location of your docks and your um, city hall. A table and a set of sharp tools. When you consider each in isolation, it all looks quite innocent. So why is it that when you put them side by side, they look seem they seem horribly disturb disturbing? Blah, blah, blah. It might be best not to ponder it too deeply. Seeing the large tome that's open on the desk does make me wonder, though. How can anybody concentrate on bookwork with this acrid odor of chemicals in the air? You'd either have to have a cast iron constitution, or a really terrible sense of smell, which I have. I can't smell things. Those large jars seem to have a pale things floating around inside them. I suppose they're fruit liquors or something, or like the pickled umeboshi plums we make back home. Ah, Father Hatch eyes like that in his laboratory as well. I expect their human organs in a preserving solution, probably as examples of some rare medical condition. Miss Susato, there are some things in the world that it's perfectly fine never to know about, ever. Oh, so as I said, I'm sure they're fruit liquors or umeboshi, aren't they? Of course! Is there going to be actually something we need to see here, or no? I feel like we've seen all we can possibly see. We can't examine the bloody table. The jars, can't examine the chandelier. Can't examine the files. Yeah, so we go back. Um... Then two spells? I thought my game saved to a cloud, I reset the console. <gasps> oh no! I think... Mine- I think mine's definitely saved on the cloud because I do the, um, platinum... Not platinum. But it does the cloud backup so that I could earn platinum points. To okay, not here. Where am I going? Shom's a sweet. No. Prison. Whoa. What's he doing? He's... Oh my! The whole wall of the cell is covered in mathematical equations! And he's still writing more now! Um, Professor, sorry to interrupt. Oh, ah, uh, Mr. Narahodo. Uh, and who is this young lady? My name is Susato Mikotoba, and Mr. Narahodo's judicial assistant. It's a pleasure to meet you, Professor. Oh, if only, if only I met a friend young... 
If only I'd met a refined young woman like you sooner. None of this would have happened. No, that's not logical. It makes no sense at all. Oh dear, I'm, I'm sorry if my presence here upsets you. I owe an apology too, Professor. I didn't manage to deliver what I promised you I would in court this morning. Oh no, 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 no. The whole thing, the whole miserable affair. It all happened because I've been such a complete and utter clot. Yes, that's true. Um, Professor Hairbrain, what have you been working on in your cell? Oh, oh, you, um, you mean that? Oh dear, how embarrassing. I was suddenly stopped by an idea, you see. I simply had to write it down. The wall was all I had to, to hand. Oh, is it some new hypothesis? Something to surpass super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, maybe? Ah, no, actually. This is my autobiography. Your autobiography? I was like diddled and fiddled. No, I don't think that's a very good title. Uh, Albert's <laughs> diddled and fiddled. <laughs> I found I could represent my odd fortunes with only odd numbers in an ambitious set of si simultaneous equations. Really? I'm going to have to pay back all those loans I took for the kinesis machine, you say? So There's going to be a new serial publication from next month. Part 1. An odd birth. An odd upbringing. Can't beat the man's optimism, that's for sure. I see. Well, for now, would you mind if we talked a little more about the case? Oh yes, yes, of course. I've been working through the numbers. I was diddled! I was fiddled! Please stop saying that. By the pair of them! Don't say that. My husband, and by that aloof engineer Drebber. We're not going to have to sit through an explanation of all these equations, are we? Okay, converse this morning's trial. Everything I believe in has been turned on its head. My research, Mr. Asman, the kinesis machine, my hypothesis even. I'm sorry it's come to this. There really there was really no other way. No, it's not your fault. I want to protect my work, but in the end, there was nothing worth protecting. It was never my intention to deceive anyone. I didn't want to trick the public. No, of course you didn't. When I caught this morning, I realized something. Oh? If you've done something wrong without knowing it, you've still done something wrong. Logically, it makes no difference if you're aware of it or not. Ignorance is a poor excuse. The blame still lies with me. Oh, Professor. He believed in me this morning, you know? Barak did. He believed in my hypothesis. Well, I think... That was just a necessary factor in the prosecution establishing its case. No, no. Barak wouldn't do something like that. I'm sure he genuinely believed it. Did he? I think I understand now. Why it was that he decided to take on the prosecution in my trial, I mean. Did he? Do you? After the terrible accident happened, nobody would believe in my hypothesis anymore. Not the police, not the prosecution service, not any lawyers even. I feel like I dealt some kind of finishing blow there. So if any other prosecutor had taken the case, if it was anyone other than Barak, I'm sure the prosecution could have would have declared my hypothesis a complete and utter nonsense. It was, so... <laughs> and in that case, you would have been declared a fraud yourself, Professor. Exactly. Which would have been a fate worse than death for me. But Barak insisted that I was a proper man of science from start to finish. You think that's why he... I know him very well indeed. He's an extremely kind-hearted soul. But that extremely kind-hearted soul... Spent all morning trying to paint you as a murderer, didn't he? Well, admittedly, that part of the analysis appears to have some flaws in it. And what about the whole Reaper side of things? How does that fit in with the kind-hearted soul idea? Mr. Asman. Do, do you think he said I have to trick me from the very start? I'm sorry to say, that does seem likely, yes. When I first met him, he introduced himself as a wealthy financier. He looked over the paper I'd written and said my work would benefit all humanity and must be pursued. He was so enthused, he was so empathetic. emphatic. But in reality, he was a mastermind of some vast criminal network, it seems. I still can't believe it. As the machine was essentially a set decoration for some stage magic. It probably didn't require a large amount of investment, actually. But the scale of it, it wasn't just some small trick. It was a very elaborate feat of deception. Oh, 
all young scientists are full of hope about their virgin ideas, full of zeal. But none of us have any money. We want to do research, but we can't afford it. Many of us take on barely legal part-time work to er earn just a few measly pennies to carry on. To go through all that, only to be taken for a complete fool, it's too rotten to believe. It is, I agree. And that's why we have to find those responsible and bring them to justice. Mr. Asman is no more of- Whoa, that's Runosuke. Whoops. Mr. Asman is no more, of course, which leaves only the engineer. Mr. Enoch Drebber. Drebber the engineer. Is he an engineer, or a magician, or a swindler? It was about a year ago when Mr. Asma first brought Drebber to me at, to be at my laboratory. Since then, I've met him as many times to discuss the details about the Kinesis machine. But at no point did you have any inkling that he was just an illusionist? Oh, he definitely wasn't just an illusionist. What do you mean? He was a wealth of deep scientific knowledge. There's no question that the man's a genuine scientist. It's instantly apparent in conversation. I see. But the wretched man deceived you, Professor. It's unforgivable. We must do everything we can to find him and bring him to justice. Are there no more clues you can give us to, uh, as to his whereabouts? I'm sorry. We only ever discussed the Kinesis machine. Nothing else. Hmm. Although, just once, I did visit his workshop. What workshop? Trevor's enormous fabrication laboratory, where I constructed my great machine. Why didn't you mention this before? You knocked Trevor's workshop. There's every chance we might find the man there. Trevor's workshop. So you've been to Trevor's place of work then? Yes, just once you understand. It, it was an enormous place. Plenty of room to construct a kinesis machine, you see. Where can we find it? We have to go there at once. There's a good chance that we'll find Drebber there. Well, yes, definitely. I'm sure. As in, I'm sure you're not going to want to hear this. But I have absolutely no idea what the workshop is at all. What good are you, Albert? I'm so sorry. I was more than half expecting that. You see, I was blindfolded in the carriage the entire way there. He blindfolded you? He wasn't taking any chances then. The place was incredible, the pinnacle of modern engineering. He, even the oil he used is the very best, a special French machine oil that's impossible to obtain in Britain. Ah, the indescribable scent of that imported oil. And this is what we do. We get the scent of the oil, we get Toby, we find Drebber. Perfumers across the world should forget their secret formulae and use that instead. What do you think, Mr. Sato? Oh, the machine for your next birthday? I've never used any kind of perfume, Mr. Naruhodo, and I'm not sure I'd like to start with that. I don't suppose you know even part of the workshop's address, Professor. You don't have a business card for Mr. Trevor, for example. The man was clearly very cautious, Mr. Sato. I'm sure he would never- Aha! Yes, I do. He gave me his business card once. It's right here, look. What? Let me see that. Whoa. What happened? I heard it. Oh, Jay! Thank you so much for the follow! It's good to see you! Throw etiquette into the wind, why don't you? Enoch Trevor, engineer. I'm afraid that's all it says. There's no address. No. Oh well. Can't say I'm surprised. Still, this could be useful. Trevor's card has been entered into the court record. Okay, I don't need you anymore. Bye! We're going to the experimentation stage. Hey, hey, hey! Woo, woo, woo! Happy Thursday to you! I saw you streaming and was like, yay! Yay, I'm streaming again! Now that, like, free time... I have some free time now. I'm just like, gotta go back to playing games. But I hope you've been having a good Thursday! We're going to present... The card. Actually, I want to examine this first. Uh, little plus and a minus, probably for. Aha! This dark smudge here. I think perhaps it's machine oil. Ah, uh, yes, possibly. Professor Hairbrain mentioned something about the oil Mr. Drebber uses, didn't he? He said it was specially imported, very high quality oil that's impossible to obtain in Britain. Yes, that's right. But more importantly, it is more fragrant than the finest perfume. So, excuse me a moment. 
Oh, it doesn't appear to have any scent at all. Don't worry. I expect it's just because there's such a tiny amount on here. Okay, there's a smear of oil. Now I'm going to... Ooh, no, 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 I was right on there. Presents. About this, Gina. Yeah, I'm still learning me letters at the moment. I only know A to E, so if it ain't too much blame trouble. Uh, actually, Gina, it's the back of the card that's important. Eh? I'll come. Definitely ready for the weekend, just one more day. <laughs> hairbrain. Yeah, he really is a hairbrain, and I'm just like... How are you a smart scientist if you don't understand just like, Common sense, man! Uh, I'm ready for the weekend, too. I just want to sleep. I want to pass out. I took an hour and a half nap today during work. Whoopsies. <laughs> There's just a dirty old smudge on the back, that's all. It turns out that this is very high-quality French machine oil. It has a very particular scent, apparently. Don't say! Let's have a whiff, then! Sure? I don't smell nothing. No, no, we didn't mean that you should smell it. Oh, right. I mean, Toby! <gasps> Boo -boo! His sense of smell is so good, he can track people over the oceans, can't he? Professor Hairbrain informs us that this oil is unique to Mr. Trevor's workshop. <gasps> He's so good. <laughs> Look at these poopies! Look at these little toppies! I think he's picked up the scent. So, you mean if he follows the scent of this oil, Toby can lead us to that Dodge Co's workshop? That's right. That's exactly what we were hoping. Alright then, we'll give it a go. I'll just borrow that. What? Wait, when did you... Once a pickpocket. If I can lead everyone to that Trevor's workshop... I'll be the boss's boss before next week! Oh yes, Gina. I'm sure you'll be promoted. Poor, poor Gregson. Whoa, Jay, it's so good to see you! Long time no see! I hope you've been well, dude! Got some good news, my auto crash lawsuit settled out of court. So I'm returning to streaming in a week or two and I don't have to go to court after all. Oh! Oh, damn! Whoa! Yo, I'm I'm so glad everything got settled. And hopefully, like, you know, you'll be okay with, like, medical expenses and stuff. Dang! Congratulations, Jay! So good to see you. Gotta go and try to get some sleep, but I'm sure I'll see you around. Okay, thank you for popping in, Jade. Have a good night! It's so good to see you! Ding, ding, ding. Right then, Ola, leave it to me. Sorry? We're all get going after that dodgy engineer curve right this minute. Oh, but hang on. Someone's supposed to be on guard duty here all the time. I'm afraid we can't help. We need to get on with our investigation as well, Gina. Oh, right. Oh well, never mind. It ain't gonna be me what gets in the neck. It'll be the boss. Poor, poor Gregson. Again. Ready, Toby? Got that oil scent, have ya? Come on, then, boy. See you later! No, we're gonna follow you. <laughs> I do hope the scent of that oil leads into that swindler's workshop. Yes, I hope so too. Ideally before the dog swims across the channel to France. Do 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 do. Okay, so I guess we just... Move now? Madam to spells? Nope! Uh... Forensics lab? Nope! Uh... <laughs> not prison. Not his office. Sholmes? Nah... Okay, walkthrough time. I mean, I've been doing a pretty good job. I've been... Moving along, getting achievements. Okay, talk to him. Uh. Oh. Okay, I did miss something. Uh, at the forensics lab. It's very, very particular. You have to examine this book. Look at this big, thick book here. 
Ah, it appears to have been an accounting ledger. It's a record of the forensic investigation team's spending, I think. Playing Ace Attorney 8? Yeah, I... I started playing this a year ago. Still haven't finished it. And I really want to finish this before the next um, Somnium Files games comes out later this month. But I don't think I'm going to finish it. But we'll see. I'll try my best. <laughs> oh? What is it? It's clear that the team purchases various equipment and supplies on a monthly basis, but... Well, one entry seems rather strange. Really? In what way? They're buying 500 scalpels every month. 500? They must be working really hard on dissecting corpses. I don't know. Judicial autopsies are only carried out in certain special circumstances. And scalpel blades can be sharpened, too. It does seem a bit strange, you're right. 500 scalpels a month? What could they possibly be using them all for? Did you hear with all the drama on YouTube as of late? No, I am missing all the drama. What's happening? Drama with who? What are you doing? Ah! Okay, there she is. Sorry, we, um, had something we wanted to ask you, but you weren't here, so... So you thought you'd snoop around. That's acceptable to you people from the East, is it? Well, what do you want? Ah, um, Lord Strongheart told us, you see, that it was you who examined the victim's body. Um, Mr. Asman's body, I mean. So we came to ask you about your findings, on Lord Strongheart's advice. Very well. If the Lord Chief Justice has given his consent, I'll tell you what our investigation revealed. But when we're done, you must leave immediately. She is very tall. <laughs> Your findings. Between the Actman and another person named Quanti. I have never heard of them before, and that's probably why I don't know any of the drama. <laughs> so you want to know what the forensics investigation team determined from its examination of the scene? The victim, Mr. Odious Man. Uh, odious Man, who disappeared from the experimentation stage amid an explosion. And the Mr. Asman, who appeared moments later partway up the Crystal Tower. But without question, one and the same person. That is the team's conclusion. But that can't be right. If it was an elaborate trick, we could only speculate about how it was carried out. Let's see. If two people who looked very similar to each other were involved, they could have made it appear as if one single person had switched places, couldn't they? Very true, but sadly in this instance, that was not the case. The man who disappeared and the man who subsequently reappeared was the same person. The fingerprints at the scene make that quite evident. Ah, fingerprints. They're not yet officially recognized as forensic evidence in the British justice system. But on one day, one day, they will be used as an investigative aid as a matter of course. Oh my, but that would mean that the instantaneous kinesis actually took place. So where does that leave us? Uh, when you can next time on your YouTube look them up, it will explain everything. Ooh. I mean, I kind of like not being in drama. Like, some people love drama and gossip, so they're just like, What's happening? Ooh, I just want to see what, like, what's going on. But, I don't know. I like living my life drama-free. I'm getting old and tired. <laughs> my team was tasked with investigating, not drawing conclusions. Instantaneous kinesis is impossible, and yet the body did move from one place to the other. This hasn't cleared up anything up at all. It's made the whole thing even more of a mystery. Ah! Hello? Mama, what's this? Ah! Where did she spring from? And did she just call the doctor Mama? This is a lawyer, dear. Oh. Um, hello. To meet you? Pleased to meet you! Yes, I'm a defense lawyer. But... Mama? Yes? Can I cut this one up? What? I've never seen an inside an eastern person before. I want to know what it looks like. Of course you can't. It's a live specimen, as you can very well see. Hmm. Boring. 
She's creepy. I think I just had a near-death experience. Oh dear. That's a Naruhodo. You're as pale as corpse. Then let's leave before I'm mistaken for one. Well, I think we've done all the investigating we can here for now. If we could just determine the whereabouts of Mr. Drebber. I'm sure Gina and little Toby won't let us down. Now then. Do you think we ought to try to speak with Mrs. Sholmes at this point? We have things to discuss and I'm dying to meet him again after all these months. Yes, it's quite possible he might know something useful, you're right. We ought to find him at Madame Suspel's. He's supposed to be working there as a temporary waxwork exhibit. Yes, Iris told me all about his latest unusual venture. Wait, I'm going to... people. Albert Hairbrain. Gina Lestrade. 18 years old. Tobias Gregson, 45. Esmeralda, two spells. She's only 26, whoa. Balthazar Loon. Empresario of Short Pleasure Voyages Flying Balloons. Bohemian Boy. Because his name is too long. <laughs> He's just Bohemian Boy. He's 11. Courtney Scythe is 39. Wow. Scotland Yard Coroner, leader of the forensic investigation team, and one of Lord Strongheart's most trusted allies. Enoch Drebber, a trickster who seems to be both an engineer and a magician. He constructed a machine for Professor Hairbrain's demonstration. Dang. Eat some food, dude. You look too gaunt. I was hoping the her daughter's profile would show up also, but... Guess not. Well, I can see why... She has 500 scalpels. So, what are you doing at the moment, Doctor? Keeping a close eye on things so no impertinent Easterners think they can look around in my office. Are there such impertinent Easterners around? How terrible. Yes, you. She doesn't mince her words, Mrs. Otto. I think perhaps it's time we left. Sorry, I just wanted to talk to her again. Okay, move. Madam Two Spells. Here we are again at the House of Horrors. I'm afraid I haven't gotten used to the place yet. I'd still like to turn on my heels and go straight home. Via the confectionery, of course. susa san is really after something sweet today, isn't she? E! What's the matter? Look, Mr. Naruhodo! Look at that waxwork! I'm quite sure it wasn't there before. <laughs> it looks exactly like Mr. Sholm's down to the very last detail. Aha! What is it? Oh, sorry. I think you'll find. That's the temporary waxwork himself. Ah, the friend of my dedicated employee. Oh, yes. Hello again. It's Junosuke. Junosuke Naruhodo. I must say, I am quite spellbound by the great detective. He is a marvel. My precious waxwork is already back where it belongs. You... you don't mean... But yes, the mystery is solved already. Wow, Mr. Sholmes can really engage his brain when he's hungry enough. So as you can see, he has returned to his habitual duties. Yes. His habitual duties? Hello. Do not disturb. Uh... Ooh. Poor Susato-san. She looks very perplexed. So, can we see this now? Open up! We want to see it! Ah, yes. The heavy curtains in the middle of the House of Horrors. Whatever's on the other side of them, you just know it's going to be terrifying, don't you? The sign says it's Madame Suspel's special exhibit. It seems you have to pay extra to go inside. I know. Can you believe that? Pay more money, as if we haven't been scared enough already. It's not my doing, Mr. Nadhodo. Okay, so I guess we can't, so I'll just talk to Sholmes. We really do need to speak with Mr. Sholmes, and I am longing to say hello again. But where is he? <laughs> I think you might find that he's quite nearby, actually. Oh, what do you... Indeed, my dear fellows, it is I. The world's famous great detective in waxwork, Herlock Sholmes. That's so cute. She fainted. <laughs> My most humble apologies. I thought 
thought I'd died and gone to an eternal paradise for a moment. Fly in London. My dear madam, allow me to make amends for by offering you a tasty free deduction at some points. As long as it's not of questionable street food quality. I don't understand. Why are you working as a waxwork here, Mr. Sholmes? Merely a secret identity, you understand. That the case here is largely solved now. Largely solved? We're talking about the waxwork abduction, I presume. Indeed we are, my good fellow. As I predicted, it was as easy as proverbial pie. Though I confess, I'm yet to partake of a pie, proverbial or otherwise, or any food so far for that matter. That stomach rumble echoed around the whole museum. So how did you manage to solve it so quickly? Ah, well, do remember I said it was largely solved. Anyway, I simply negotiated with the culprits. Are you familiar with the so-called telephone? Oh yes, it's a most modern invention allowing you to hold a conversation with people far away. In Japan, only the imperial capital and a handful of other cities are connected as yet. This morning, a telephone call was received here from the perpetrator of the abduction. As such, I was able to negotiate terms, and in the end, the waxwork was turned. That's amazing. Just between you and I, it would appear the culprit had always intended to return the stolen waxwork in any event. Oh, but I thought whoever was responsible had dem uh, demanded a ransom, no? Yes, I think perhaps. The ransom demand was necessary to avoid unwanted suspicion regarding the true motive. But does that not mean your negotiating was entirely unnecessary? A fact that I must ask you to keep from Madame to spells at all costs. A hungry young Iris awaits my return to Baker Street after all. <laughs> Poor Iris. Now then, do I sense that you have some business with this great waxwork? Yes, I want to see the professor's waxwork. We're in the process of trying to track somebody down. Oh? Yes, a man by the name of Enoch Drubber. He's a swindler who duped Professor Harebrain and the engineer who built the Kinesis machine. A swindler and an engineer. Quite the modern man. He also seems to be a conjurer of sorts too, with a considerable knowledge of stage magic. We really need to locate him before the trial resumes tomorrow morning. But we have so few clues to go on, that's the trouble. Do you have any good ideas? I have no data yet. It is a capital mistake to have good ideas before one has data. If I knew something of the man's appearance at least, I may be in a better position to help. Yes, Drebber's appearance. Fortunately for you, however, presently I have little to occupy myself and little to fill my stomach. As soon as you find any clue, no matter how small, I shall gladly give you my thoughts on it. Hey, hey, hey. Let me present to you. Oh, I can't take... I'll just talk then. Cosmo stuff. Mr. Sholmes, did you lie to us? My dear Mr. Naruhodo, stay that piercing stare. What is this about? Last winter, when we were first on our way to Britain aboard the steamship. Your words were very clear. So then, let us unravel this mystery and discover what events led to this curious murder. You told us that it was murder. And you examined Kazuma-sama's body. Indeed, and wherein lies the problem? We met him earlier today, the victim, Kazuma Asogi. So is the masked dude really Kazuma? You're quite sure. He, he was wearing some sort of mask and was apparently suffering from amnesia. But yes, I'm quite sure it was Kazuma Sama. You must have known at the time, Mr. Sholmes. That he wasn't actually dead. Well, I can only assume I was swept up in the murderous atmosphere of the moment. But the fellow wasn't dead at all. Haha, <laughs> why is this funny? Priceless. I don't suppose that performance would pass muster, would it, Mr. Nanhodo? I could believe that the crewman present at the time made a mistake. But not you, Mr. Sholmes. I will now tell you something of the very of first importance, my dear fellow. Great detectives are wont to lie. It will serve you well to remember that. Please, Mr. Sholmes. 
tomorrow in court, you'll find yourself on the threshold of a very great mystery. For now, I'm afraid that's all I can say. That's all you're going to- Okay, I'm still gonna present the photograph of Jebber, but what- What purpose would he have to lie to us about Kazuma's death? Mr. Sholmes, would you cast your eyes over this photographic print? It's of Mr. Enoch Drepper. The face of the engineer we seek. Well, all Englishmen look broadly the same, of course. So, looking at the photograph won't be particularly instructive. You all right, Mr. Sholmes? Ah, oh, yes, forgive me. Very interesting, this. Very interesting indeed. What's wrong, Mr. Sholmes? You've turned quite pale all of a sudden. I have a suggestion, Mr. Nadahodo. Will you indulge me? Oh, well, what is it? As I explained to you when you arrived, the missing waxwork has been returned. And I personally reinstalled it in the exhibit from which it was taken, behind those thick curtains. Oh, yes, the professor exhibit, isn't it? Would you like to see it? For a mere five shillings? That's a special one-time-only price, you understand. What? The opportunity won't come again, I might add. Wouldn't you like to see the fruits of my labor? Oh, well, we do have a rather pressing investigation to carry out. Perhaps we could p postpone? The price is a very reasonable five shillings. I think you'll find it well worth it. Are you being quite serious, Mr. Sholmes? Surely you need only look at my expression to ascertain if this is seriousness or silliness. But you're always silly. Unless this entire thing was planned from the very beginning. If that was, that's crazy. Like, if they knew, hey, this Kazuma story arc is going to stretch between two games. But again, what was... Then what was... <sighs> Then Sholmes would have had to known what Kazuma was sent to Britain to do. Did they know each other? Because Strongheart... Okay, so Strongheart knows Susato's dad. I don't know if Sh Sholmes knows Susato's dad. Susato's dad probably also knows Van Zeke's then. Or at least his brother because he saw the bloody dog collar and was like, yo, get back home. Mysteries! I could never tell with you, that's the point. Very well, it couldn't hurt. Here's your five shillings. Gratefully received. So, the special exhibit awaits you behind the curtain. I invite you to peruse it, peruse it at your leisure. Well, the money's been spent, so let's go and see the special exhibit. Hmm, through those heavy curtains at last. Examine the curtains. Five shillings we've had to pay. Doesn't seem right somehow that Mr. Sholm slipped the money into his own pocket, does it? No. Ah! We could ask Gina to retrieve it for us, using her special skills. Pickpocketing police officers and diddling detectives. Is this what makes Britain great? <laughs> Not to mention demigod prosecutors taking the law into their own hands or chip-loving inspectors. Inspector Gregson comes off rather well in that list, I think. If I had a bottomless newspaper bag of fish and chips, I would take that. I want- OH MY freaking! Oh dear, I felt a shiver run down my spine as soon as we walked in here. Mrs. Ado, I say we turn on our heels and go straight home via a really big confectionery. We, we certainly can't do that. We've paid five shillings already. True. Actually, now I'm looking a little more closely. We've paid good money to see an exhibit that's clearly incomplete. The nerve of the great diddling detective is far more terrifying than anything else in this place. Why do they keep saying he's diddling? Please stop saying diddling. 
This was... This must be what Mr. Sholmes meant when he said the case was largely solved. Be that as it may, Mr. Sholmes heavily implied there'd be a clue about the engineer in here, didn't he? But where? The guy holding the lantern, duh. Since we pay five shillings, let's do five shillings worth of investigation, shall we? Yes, we... We will get what we pay for. Is that fear or frustration that's making Susan's son's voice tremble? Oh my gosh! The owl in the back has glowing eyes! This is scary! It's not Halloween! This must be the killer! The fiend known as the Professor! Yes, I think so, according to what Madame Tuspells said. He killed five victims, all of noble or royal blood. The waxwork is so lifelike, isn't it? Like all the wax models in this place. I know, it doesn't- it looks like it could start moving at any moment, doesn't it? If only it had a head, that is. Perhaps we should examine it in a little more detail. So this is the condemned man. Yes, the so-called professor. Then, perhaps, his head was chopped off by a guillotine. But, unable to find peace, he emerged from his grave as a headless ghost! Do we have to entertain such terrifying ideas, Mr. Soto? Anyway, I'm sure the model has a head once. There's a metal fitting for it, see? Then, perhaps Mr. Sholmes absentmindedly forgot to reattach it. That's an extremely absent-minded detective you're describing, isn't it? Or perhaps... The thief absent-mindedly forgot to include the head when he or she returned it to the museum. And that would be an extremely absent-minded thief. Could there have been some reason why only the head wasn't returned? Well, whatever the reason, it means we don't know what the face of the infamous professor looked like, do we? Oh. There's something caught just inside the convict's jacket here. It looks like a piece of broken glass! That's what fell through the crystal tower! And quite a big piece, too. It's very thick, isn't it? About five times thicker than normal window glazing, I'd say. Where could such a thick piece of glass have come from, I wonder? I suppose it must have been made thick to increase its strength. But why? Well, perhaps... Because the glass had to span a particularly wide area, such as in a big building, for example. Ah, well, we've seen a large glass building recently, haven't we? And some of the glass was broken, too. You don't mean... Exactly, the Crystal Tower at the Great Exhibition. But why would glass from the Crystal Tower be lodged inside this waxworks jacket? Why indeed? It makes you think, doesn't it? A piece of broken glass has been added into the court record. Earlier in court, we established that the kinesis experiment was a trick. And now we discovered this fragment of glass here in this waxwork. Is it just a coincidence? Is there anything... Else we can examine? This is really freaky. I hate this. Just gonna comb through everything to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, we're not. So we examine this dude! This part of the exhibit is just as disturbing as the rest. It looks so real. It seems to be a young man in a white overcoat. And he has a large shovel in his hand, too. Look! Perhaps we should investigate in a little more detail. Well, he has a camera. What's this here? Well, this would appear to be a lens in the middle, so... If this thing jumps out at me, if this is a real person, I... W I hate this game. I believe it's probably a camera. A camera? But it's so small. British technology is incredible, isn't it? I mean, what about Mr. Sholmes' skin prints? I think perhaps you should treat Mr. Sholmes' inventions as exceptions to the rule. But anyway, why would the man in a graveyard at... Uh, why would a man be in a graveyard at night with a camera? I wonder. Perhaps he was trying to capture the moment a dead body came back as ghost on film. We'll just borrow this for a little while, I think. Okay, we're just taking the camera? Okay. By looking at the photographic plate inside the camera, we can see what picture was taken. What's a photographic plate? It's a piece of glass coated in a special emulsion that reacts to the light coming in through the lens. If we open the cover at the back of the camera, we should find it. Let's have a look. You should see it yourself. You should see yourself, Susato san. Your eyes are shining. You really do like machinery, don't you? Hydrate? Oh, yeah, I really need to hydrate my throat. Thank you for redeeming that hydrate smooth. 
Um... What a large shovel! He's holding it rather ominously, isn't he? What on earth was a man doing with a shovel in a graveyard in the middle of the night? Um, Mrs. Aldo. Yes? That's a spade, isn't it? No, it's a shovel. No, no, no. Shovels are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a spade. We've been through this, Mr. Narahodo. It's a shovel. No, no, no. Although, we haven't considered trowels. No, trowels are handheld. We've allowed ourselves to be distracted, I feel. Perhaps we should concentrate on what the man was doing with the implements. So we're going to bury the hatchet? You're right, though. What was the man doing in the graveyard in the first place? That's the real question. I'm afraid to examine too much of him. Like, why are they not showing us his face? <gasps> I saw his face. I can't see his face very well, can you? Perhaps if I just... Oh, do, do you think you should be manhandling the exhibits, Mr. Nadohodo? I'll put it back exactly as it was, don't worry. Hey, that looks like rubber. What on earth? How can... I don't believe it. A black monocle. Mr. Nadohodo, is it possible that this man is... Yes. It's Enoch Drubber. The color of his hair is different, but... It's unmistakably him. Indeed it is. Mr. Sholmes! This man... is the subject of your present hunt, I believe. Yes, that's... that's right. Just who is this man? Why is he here in this exhibit? And why does the convict behind him have no head? The head was missing when the model was returned by the thief who stole it. What a surprise. So then the case isn't solved yet, is it? Did I not say so myself? Largely solved were my words, I believe. But I must locate the missing head, toot the sweet, as Madame would say, or I'll be in grave trouble. A very hungry Iris still awaits my return to Baker Street, preferably with rations. Ugh. Do you know, though? Something about this room is strange. Strange? What do you mean? Well, the displays in the House of Horrors are supposed to depict real events, are they not? Indeed they are, Mr. Sato. Do go on. And, as terrifying as they are, the scenes in the other exhibits are believable. But this one... This surely couldn't ever really have happened, could it? I think it's time I educated you a little. About the nature of the incidents involving the professor ten years ago. Oh wait, um, I think I have to examine the shovel one more time for the shovel. This part is it just a young man in a white overcoat. He has a large shovel in his hand, too, look. Perhaps we should investigate in a little more detail. Oh, was that the whole shovel talk? I guess I got it. Large shovels, holy on. Okay. I wish there was a way to check my achievements on just a game screen. So I don't know if my shovel thing is done. Maybe if I go to options? Nope. I'll check after stream. Uh, okay. Converse. The resurrecting convict. I believe I told you a little about the professor yesterday, did I not? He took the lives of five victims, everyone being either a member of the aristocracy or royalty. All were attacked by an enormous hunting hound and had their throats ripped from their bodies. You didn't tell us that. Oh gosh, an enormous hound? How awful. After taking the life of his fifth, fifth victim, the killer was apprehended. It was a case of unprecedented magnitude in Britain, you understand, accordingly. The professor was tried in a closed court. No members of the public were permitted. A closed court? So you mean that the professor's identity... As you surmised, my dear fellow, his identity was never made public. Naturally, he was found guilty and was summarily sentenced to death by hanging. 
He was buried in the grave at Lowgate Cemetery, which adjoins the rear of the prison where he had been held. However, that was not the end of the affair. Oh? The very night that he was buried, the convicted man came back to life. Came back to life? He clawed his way out of the ground and emerged into the moonlit graveyard. The exhibit here depicts that very scene as described by the sole witness to those chilling events. There was a witness? But of course, my dear fellow, it was none other than the young man in the white overcoat. Enoch Drebber. He saw it happen. Isn't this the plot of the first Sherlock Holmes movie that has Robert Downey Jr. in it? It's like, oh, we've got black whatever. And then he died, they buried him, but then the grave, the graveyard keeper saw him, like, claw out of the grave. But he was paid for it, I think. So this is a waxwork model of Enoch Drever. Ten years ago, the convicted professor, having been gibbeted and buried, emerged from his grave in the dead of night. The sole witness to that unimaginable scene was this young man. From appearances, I would say he was about 20 years old. It's so horrifying. Scared out, of his, scared out of his wits, the young Drebber ran to a nearby police station to report the incident. And the sheer terror of what he'd seen is said to have turned his hair white overnight. Yes, as shown in the photograph we have of him, his hair is completely white. For the following few days, the story of what he'd seen was on every front page of the capital. The public was frantic for every last detail about the killer who'd come back to life. As you've seen, an exhibit was even created here at Madame Suspel's. I can quite understand why the man's hair turned white, certainly. But what I don't understand... ...is what Mr. Drebber was doing in the first place. In a lonely graveyard in the middle of the night. Yes, what was he up to? Following the execution. The professor's acts of terror threw London's upper classes into complete panic ten years ago. It was a great scandal, one might say, at the very highest levels of society. And since the killer's identity was never made public, rumors abounded. After all, no killer had ever before systematically employed a dog as a weapon of murder. Yes, I can imagine the impact the case must have had. But in time, of course, the rumors abated. So too did talk of the shocking witness account of the convict who came back to life. It was forgotten, dismissed as a dubious ghost story, as a preposterous parlor tale. But, but why did the people stop believing it? Why, simply because there was no resurrection to speak of, as was established in fact. What do you mean by no resurrection? The police investigated the grave in Lowgate Cemetery and published the findings. The convict's body was found to be buried exactly where it had been the following the execution. No! But that would mean Mr. Drebber must have lied to the police and the newspapers. That would appear to be the lo only logical explanation, yes. The young man subsequently vanished from society and nothing has been heard of him since. It's rather striking then that he should resurface now, don't you think? Of course, the convicted murderer couldn't really have come back to life. That's not possible. But Drebber's hair is unusually white, and if that really did happen overnight as a result of shock... It's hard to believe the incident was an out-and-out -out lie. So what if he or she is still alive? Ah! Oh, Gina! I mean... If a convicted killer, who supposedly killed five people, came back to life, that's a pretty big deal. You don't want them to go around killing people again. What the bleeding Nora? What have you gone and done? Gina, what are you doing here? I, I asked Iris, and she said this is where you'd be, so... So... Gina, that's all land in a museum. Madame to Spells will have you take position as a waxwork if you're not careful. I think there might be a more pressing concern. I, I still had some flash powder left from six months ago, so... So, please don't shoot the ceiling. Alright, Gina, we understand. But please, put down the gun. Sorry, I... I got scared. You should try being one, the one on the other end of the barrel. So, what brings you here, Gina? What brings me here? What do you think? Found it. We found that dodgy cove's workshop. What? You found Drebber's workshop? Yep. Toby's those took me straight there. The boss and the others are heading over there now in a drag, so come on. Here's the address. I got the boss to write it out. 
Oh, thank you, Gina. We'll make our way there at once. Alright then, see you there. Here you go. Don't mind me. I'll just stay here, being still. What? He has no eyes. Please stop that. I know my place. In the exhibit over there. Oh dear. Someone is feeling sorry for himself. Please get your eyes back. Let's go, Mr. Sholmes. You're coming. It was hot on me, I must say. But if I were to check my duties here... Madame would have me... Forget that! I'll pay for everything. Now there's not a moment to lose, my dear fellow. I shall hail a carriage at once. No offer to share the cost from Mr. Sholmes, then. I shall gladly pay half, Mr. Narahodo. Thank you, Mr. Soto. Right, let's go. I need this investigation to be done soon. My throat hurts. So I guess this is what the original machine looked like, or at least a prototype. Oh, look! On the ground! Arrows! <laughs> that looks like... Oh, it's another super high blah, blah 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 Indeed, it would appear so, though only a prototype, naturally. Ah, so you got here then. Gina, well done for finding this place. And in such little time. You've really worked miracles. It's Toby who is the miracle worker. Oh, I thought you lot would show up in the vault long. Hello, Inspector. That's one knitted brow. <laughs> he looks like he's eating a lemon, not a bag of fish and chips. So, Inspector, is there any sign of the engineer? Sadly not. We don't find a soul in here. Oh, what a shame. Well, thank you for letting us know about this place and giving us a chance to investigate. According to what Gina tells me, we only found it thanks to a clue you lot turned up. I wouldn't want to say, go to Paris with a debt of gratitude I'm paying now, would I? Thank you. Anyway, if you're hoping to stoop around in here, I'd get cracking. Lord Van Zeeks and the forensic investigation team are on the way here as we speak. Them again. I imagine you've got the picture by now. They don't take too kindly to lawyer types. Right. So then, my dear fellow, let's turn this place upside down whilst we have the chance. Adieu, Sholmes. Pardon? They take even less kindly to great detectives than they do to lawyers. <laughs> very droll, Gregson, very droll. But you may consider me nothing more than an inconspicuous waxwork model. Oh my gosh, are we going to have to do another deduction? My throat hurts. Right then, let's see what we can find in here. You know what I can find already? Crossbow arrows. Please, please, yeah, there we go. This, this is, it's a European style quiver of arrows with steel bolts inside. <gasps> do you suppose? Crossbow bolts, these. And just the right size for the bow you lot turned up at the exhibition grounds. In other words. Yep, that's more evidence to support your theory. It all goes to show that Drubber was the one pulling the strings behind the scenes of the whole scam. The details of the crossbow have been updated. Um, okay, I can't investigate that. A toolbox. I'm sorry, Mr. Nadahodo, that machine is covered by the special blah 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 act. There would be serious repercussions if you were to examine it from the Crown and the governments. <laughs> They're investigating it! Well, those two don't seem to be holding back. Also, I just wanted to examine the toolbox, but okay. It's quite hollow inside. No working parts or devices of deception to be seen, my dear fellow. No loose change dropped on the floor or nothing. Not even bone for Toby here, my dear fellow. British people are very much ruled by their own ideals, aren't they? I think that's just these two, Mrs. Nato. Hmm. Boxes? This door doesn't want to open. Yeah, looks like it's got a pretty he pretty hefty lock on it. There's a specialist lost us on his way over from the yard, so hands off till he gets here. With permission, Inspector, I could have that lock open in less than a minute. Well, you don't have permission, and no one's given it to you. Rexon looked as though he really enjoyed that. Well, there's no sound of anybody on the other side. 
No, Jeffrey must have fled at the first sign of danger. What if there's a corpse or a waxwork model in there? Hmm. Okay. Ooh, trophy. Ah, this appears to be most interesting. Yes, most interesting indeed, wouldn't you say? It's an impressive looking back massage, that's for sure. I have no doubt that if you hit your shoulders a few times with that, your aches and pains would soon go away. It's a Royal Society trophy for excellence in science. A young scientist could wish for no higher honor. Ah. Would you like a massage? No, no. No, I'm fine, thank you. I had no idea it was such a grand thing. I think it's becoming increasingly clear that there's much more to this Mr. Enoch Drebber than conjuring tricks. I couldn't agree more, my dear madam. And how about you, Mr. Nadhodo? Wouldn't you like to take it with you? For your tired shoulders, of course. He's not going to let that go, is he? It's curious, though, isn't it? You would expect such an important trophy to be proudly on display somewhere, not haphazardly cast aside. English gentlemen can be quite a mystery to at times. The science trophy has been added to the court record. Oh! Man, this case really given me a lot of scares. Is something wrong, Mr. Sato? Well, I thought I heard a noise from the far side of that door. Well, Gina, did you hear it too? E yeah, I heard it and all. What do you reckon, Toby? Right, mind the grease. Whoever's in there, open up. This is Scotland Yard. Great, they ran away. Oh my, someone is in there. Oh, this rotten bleeding lock. My dear Gregson, as I said only minutes ago, if only it were countenanced, I can unlock that door in less than a minute. Fine, I'll take the rat for it. Just get us through that blasted door. There, you may enter at will. You've confused minutes with seconds, I think. Time is of the essence, I feel. What are we waiting for? Nothing for it, I suppose. This is an emergency. There's a strong possibility that beyond that door is the engineer you all seek. Be prepared for action, my dear fellow. Yes. Uh, did I finish examining everything in the room? There's dynamite. What's happened in here? Why is everything upside down? Rats, there ain't no one here after all. But there must be. It was only moments ago that we heard these noises. Maybe that was the sound of Jabber running away. But there's only one door into this room. And no windows that could afford an escape route. The skylights are too high. There are footprints up there! What's that up there? Are they footprints on the ceiling? Blow me! <laughs> no thank you! What have we here then? Looks like someone was trying to burn something in a hurry. Oh, that looks like a set of blueprints. To what? To, prof to that Professor Hairbrain's balmy machine, is it? Blimey! If we'd had these, there'd have been no need to muck about trying to investigate all that scrap metal. There is something of great interest here, too. This rope was lying on the floor at the foot of that pillar. A rope? What's significant about that? Never mind. You see, but you do not observe, Mr. Nadahodo. We must investigate the entire room thoroughly, and before the forensic investigation team arrive, too. Well, if there's anything I missed in the other room, I guess... They'll give me time to go back to look for it. It's a very large safe. I don't suppose even Mr. Sholmes could open that lock. Although, if you were a thief, you could just steal the entire thing, I suppose. It's bolted to the floor to prevent exactly that sort of underhand trick, Mr. Nadohodo. Well then, you could just steal the floor as well, I suppose. I'm sorry, but you really aren't making any sense at all. Anyway, I think we can agree that whatever is inside must be very important. Mm -hmm. 
Is jelly toast? No, jelly tired. <laughs> oh, green balloon! That's a really lovely model. It looks just like a real flying balloon. I think it's probably a staying aloft on the same principle as a full-size balloon using gas. A green flying balloon. It does have the hallmarks of that amazing deception at the Great Exhibition, doesn't it? Could it be that the whole thing was planned here in this very workshop? You don't say. Ooh. Almost every piece of furniture is upside down. Even Mr. Sholmes' suite isn't ever in this much of a mess. You're in no position to comment on mess, Mr. Narhodo. But I suppose it's not quite the same thing, is it? I mean, it's not messy in here, per se. It's that everything is literally upside down. But why? Why indeed. Um, Mr. Sholmes, have you found something? Ah, Mr. Narhodo. Yes, in point of fact, something fa rather fascinating. What do you make of this? Hmm, let's see. I've never seen anything like it before. It looks like a... Huh? Mr. Sato, what's the matter? That, 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 that's a... Surely that's a time bomb, isn't it? What did you say? A time bomb? Um, sorry, but... What is a time bomb, exactly? What? Ah, ha, ha, ha. You truly are one of a kind, Mr. Narodo. I won't take that as a compliment. Ah, you don't know nothing, do you, Odo? You haven't got a clue what it is either, do have you, Gina? I invite you to consult a dictionary later, Mr. Narodo. But this particular specimen is no time bomb, though I confess it has a very similar appearance. Oh. Oh, well, thank goodness. But then, what is it? I see. So that's it. Goodness, Mr. Sholmes, have you seen to the heart of the matter? There are times when I consider my lot most unfair. For I'm fated never to know how it feels to flounder as you do when a puzzle presents itself. But I have learned to accept the hardships that come with being a great detective, Mr. Soto. Here we go. I feel a great deduction coming. Ah, uh, deducing! But did I finish examining everything? No, I didn't! Once again, I can draw two conclusions from the scene we see before us. The first is that the inverted nature of the furniture in this room is a work of Drebber himself. Oh, but how could you... And the second conclusion is that the smallest vice on the floor here is without question completely genuine. Please, Mr. Sholmes, you must explain everything. It would be a pleasure. After all, this is a great detective's civic duty to teach Scotland Yard the finer points of the trade. Well, Inspector Gregson seems delighted with the idea anyway. <laughs> oh, you deflected the inspector's glare with such fortitude there, Mr. Sholmes. Well done. You're too kind, my dear madam. I hereby dedicate this great deduction to you. Kindly stand just there, Mr. Soto. Oh, yes. I'd be delighted. So, shall we begin? Once again, Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. I didn't examine the footprints on the ceiling, though. No, I'm missing examinations. It's plain to see that this room is in complete disarray. The bed, the table and chairs, the lamp, everything is upside down. Almost as if every item in the room had, until recently, been happily positioned on the ceiling, before falling straight down onto the floor. Every item in the room was on the ceiling? Are, are you suggesting that... The safe! The safe code! Indeed, the key here... is gravity. It would appear that technology has at last succeeded in freeing us from the great pull of the Earth. 432588 But the gravity in this room was reversed and then suddenly restored to normality. Goodness! The inverted furniture clearly reveals the truth about the part gravity played in this whole business. I quite understand your skepticism, Mr. Sato. I too was incredulous at first. However, my conviction in my analysis was cemented when I observed this. An anti-gravity device, almost identical to the one that featured in a dream of mine only the other day, in fact. But, but then why does it have a clock on it? A most relevant question indeed. That is a timing device that controls when the gravity direction will switch. 
It was clearly a requirement for the engineer to be able to restore normal gravity automatically. And the commotion we heard earlier from the other side of the door was the moment the restoration occurred. Yes, the reason why everything in here has been turned upside down is because of the anti-gravity device. So you see, we need look no further to explain the state in which we now find this room. The direction in which gravity acts in here was reversed by Mr. Drubber, before being restored to normality in an automatic fashion some time later by the timer device. I've witnessed precisely the scene in a dream I once had when I fell out of bed. I feel like someone's hiding in a safe, but I don't think it was Drebber. Because we did hear a click, 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 bang. So I think it is the safe. Now, let us consider the next conundrum. What was our engineer friend's aim? Indubitably, the greatest clue we have to explain his actions is above our heads. Yes, how is it possible that there are footprints all the way up there on the ceiling? A question whose answer will lead us to neatly, neatly to the truth, my dear madam. The reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because of the nearby skylight. Of course, Drebber's aim was singular, to escape. However, there's but one way into this room, excepting the skylight, that is. Ah. What? By inverting the gravity in here, Drebber was able to fall conveniently to the ceiling and make his escape via the otherwise inaccessible skylight, leaving those footprints behind on the way. But the ceiling in here is very high, Mr. Sholmes. If the gravity reversal was sudden, wouldn't Mr. Drebber have fallen up to the ceiling rather violently? Hmm, falling up is both scientifically and philosophically a rather interesting concept, I feel. But the man was cornered with nowhere to run, so escape through the skylight was his only option. You may recall that I found this in the room earlier, which I believe offers us a solution. Oh, the rope. To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this rope? By anchoring one end to the wall, the man was able to lower himself safely to the ceiling. Which explains how Drebber was able to escape this room before our arrival. He reversed the pull of gravity and fled via the skylight. And personally, I should very much like to reverse the pull of gravity again now, just for fun. Okay, so I guess I don't have to examine the footprints on the ceiling because that's part of the deduction. Thus concludes Herlock Sholm's great deduction of this topsy-turvy puzzle. <laughs> She's completely spellbound. Um, Mr. Sholmes, there's just one thing that troubles me. Only one? <laughs> I would expect nothing less. You're destined to be troubled by just one thing for the rest of your life. The thing is, is such a thing actually possible? An anti-gravity device, I mean? I would say that with the man's current scientific knowledge at the turn of the 20th century, it's no more possible than instantaneous kinesis. But your whole deduction hinges on it. Ah, but my dear fellow, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. However improbable it may seem. <sighs> I don't see a problem with his deduction. There's no anti-gravity device, though. It's a marvelous line, wouldn't you agree? One of my more enduring pearls of wisdom. I'd always come up with the exact phrasing. My original was clumsy. Yes, I have a feeling I've read it something in that... I feel as... I have a feeling I've read it in something that Miss Susato let me once. I'm starting to get tired. Mm. Actually, there is one other thing, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, the spell's broken at last. The rope you found was on the floor, wasn't it? Indeed it was, in lonely coils near the wall. But if Mr. Drebber had used it to escape in the way you described, wouldn't it still be tied to the wall? Mysteries inevitably unravel in the end, as I think you'll find do ropes. <laughs> And as evidence as such, you need only look at the mystery we face in this room now skillfully unraveled. That argument is as circular as the coils circular as the coils of rope. I think perhaps we might need to give Mr. Sholmes the usual little helping hands. I'm sure with some minor corrections, the great detective's great deduction will lead us to the truth. Yes, you're right. And we must do it quickly before Enoch Drubber gets too far away. If you're ready, then let us resume.
Herlock Sholmes' logic and reasoning spectacular. Wait to see. Everything is upside down. Falling straight to the floor. 4 3 to 5 8 2. It was 4 3 2 5 8 2, right? Yeah, 4 3 2 5 8 2. Inverted furniture. To think gravity could have been reversed in this very room, I find the whole idea utterly enthralling. Only Mr. Sholmes could conceive of such an explanation. But the man himself admitted it was a scientific impossibility, so... Yes, you're quite right. We must completely discount the idea at once. Ooh, that's unusually merciless of you, Mr. Sato. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. The great detective himself said so, didn't he? While refusing to do... While refusing to part with his dreams of anti-gravity devices. Yes, I suppose so. Well, let's see if examining this topsy-turvy scene a little more closely reveals some proof that shows exactly what the gravity in this room was or wasn't doing. I mean, there's a flower pot that's still upright. Well, well, I wasn't expecting to find a pretty bunch of flowers in here, that's for sure. Ah, look at that! I know, the slender little vase looks like it's about to topple at any moment, but the flowers are thriving. Somehow it makes you think of the fragility of life, wouldn't you say? To be honest, Mr. Naruhoro, something else about it made a rather deeper impression on me. That it's upright. <laughs> yes! Correct! The upright vase clearly reveals the truth about the park gravity plane in this whole business. Upon my word, Mr. Naruhodo, you've surpassed yourself by completely turning my argument on its head. Trying to impress your assistant here, perhaps? No one is trying to steal your spotlight here, Mr. Sholmes. Trust me. As you rightly say, though it appears at first glance that all the furniture in the room is upside down, this unassuming slender vase is standing keenly to attention. And unlike the large safe, there's nothing of fixing it to the floor. And it's the exception that breaks the rule. In short, much as it pains me... The gravity in this room was never inverted at all! My deepest sympathies for your loss. Oh, poor Mr. Sholmes. But the show must go on, so let us continue with our deductions. And now that we know this contrivance is not, in fact, an anti-gravity device, there remains but one other possibility. You don't say. Someone deliberately turned over every piece of furniture in here. That's what they were doing! They were sneaking around this whole place looking for a code. They then found the safe code, they cracked open the safe, they got whatever was in there. Or they hid in there. That's what happened. Which might sound obvious, but leaves one mystery very much unsolved. Namely, why would anyone choose to do that? Quite, and naturally, there is an explanation. Yes, the reason why everything is in here has been turned upside down is because of the anti-gravity device. He's absolutely determined that this device must have something to do with it, isn't he? I'm afraid the lure of an exciting scientific explanation is too strong. Well, there's no doubt that somebody did this. Somebody turned all this furniture over. So whoever it was must have had a reason. I'm afraid nothing comes to mind at all, though. Well, let's look around and see if the answer presents itself. Like the safe code! <laughs> yes, the reason why everything in here has been turned upside down is because of the safe combination! Precisely, I believe, Mr. Nodhodo, that you had a very similar experience once, did you not? Yes, last year, when I brought a lottery ticket and noted the ticket number down on the inside cover of, of a book just in case. That's it. For people who are forgetful souls at heart, I always make a written note of important information. Just keeping the ticket itself safe would be more sensible, I think. And what, pray, happened next, Mr. Naruhodo? When the day of the draw came round, I'd forgotten which book uh, I'd written the number in and had to turn my room upside down to find it. That's it. For people who are forgetful souls at heart, and always forget where they noted things down. Not if you always note things in the same place. I actually won the second prize, you know? 
could have fallen upright, right? But the chance of that only that one thing falling upright and everything else not, that's a little weird. Thank you, Mr. Naruhuro, but I believe I proved my point now. Which is that a very similar scenario has clearly unfolded in this room. Finding himself requiring access to the safe, the occupant of this room needed the combination code. He remembered that he'd written it on the underside of a piece of furniture, but forgot which one. Leading to the state in which we now find the room. Yes, Mr. Drebber overturned all the furniture in here, in a desperate hurry to locate the combination code that would unlock the safe. Now, let us consider whatever. What was our engineer friend's aim? <clears throat> Indubitably, greatest news above our heads. Has a possible footprint on the ceiling. Skylight. Well, if a change in direction of gravity can't explain it, then how did those footprints get there? Yes, I feel as though that particular mystery has just become even harder to solve. I can't think of any other way to explain it at all. Oh, life was so much simpler in those halcyon days when gravity could be reversed. It was minutes ago, and those halcyon days never existed in the first place. Well, I suppose we must simply put our faith in Mr. Sholmes and observe the area in more detail. Putting our faith in Mr. Sholmes is what gets us into these situations in the first place. Oh, there's a shoe. <laughs> the reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because of the nearby shoe. And on closer inspection, there are clearly footprints all over the balloon as well. In other words, the aim was never to sky that at all, but the balloon. But for what purpose? A green balloon. Hmm, that seems somewhat familiar data. Ah! That's a piece of a green balloon's envelope that Mr. Naruhodo and Iris found at the scene. And inside the green balloon that Master Gotts claimed he saw above the stage when the incident occurred was the second birdcage, the crux of the whole instantaneous kinesis de deception. You mean to say... If we assume the balloon in here is a model of the one used on the day, there's a strong possibility something may be concealed inside it. Look at the little Chunosuke on his shoulder. So cute. Something our Skonda was desperate to retrieve before making a hasty getaway. But, but the balloon's out of reach. Hence why he resorted to a projectile, namely the shoe. Ah! Most probably, Drebber intended to tear a hole in the envelope by assailing it with the shoe. However, his efforts were thwarted when the shoe itself became a prisoner of those lofty heights. Oh dear, we desperately need to examine that balloon. If only there were some way we could see inside. You may recall that I found this in the room earlier, which I believe offers a solution. Oh, the rope! To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this rope? Mr. Sholmes has managed to bring the deduction back to the rope. Alright, I have to admit, that was clever. So we just throw the rope up to the balloon and then pull it down to us on the ground? Which is much easier said than done, I feel. And could take us a very long time as well. True, perhaps we need a more surefire method. In fact, we already have one, of course, don't we? The crossbow? <laughs> yeah! To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this crossbow? That was found at the scene, in fact. And in all likelihood, belongs to Mr. Drebber. If the man had only brought it away with him that day, he could have avoided losing his shoe at such a critical time as this. So, shall we? Your curiosity is strictly has deeply stirred no doubt, my dear fellows. What is it that Enoch Drebber has hidden inside that balloon? Also, let's open the safe. <gasps> the head! What the? A waxwork? Indeed it is. A waxwork head inside a metal mask. A mask that is shut tight and fastened with a strong and quite impenetrable lock. So we can't see the face inside, that means. 
Just a moment. This... This is the head of a waxwork model. Does that mean... Oh, goodness. So Enoch's the one who took the waxwork model in the first place? I see you've joined the dots, Mr. Sato. Excellent. Ah, of course. A headless waxwork model. The case of the abducted Madame Suspell's model that you'd largely solved. It was only the head of the killer that was still missing. Indeed it was. But I believe Madame Tuspells will now have to settle her sizable account with me. This, as you have anatomized, is the head of the infamous professor. Yes, but why is it here? This conclusively con confirms my suspicions. The man responsible for stealing the professor from Madame Tuspells and returning it sans tech earlier today was none other than Enoch Drebber. This is incredible. Professor Hairbrain's case and the waxwork abduction are... They're inextricably linked by Enoch Drebber's workshop. So why would he... He took the model. The model's the one that fell into the crystal tower. But when people went to the crystal tower to examine the body, because that's where it teleported to, it was the real body. Hmm. Well, it appears our logical pleasure cruise has come to an end, my dear fellows. All that remains is, yes, to speak with the architect of this adventure. The architect? You mean, Mr. Drebber? As it seems quite impossible that he escaped via one of the skylights. Obviously, the man must still be here in the room. What? And his location should be abundantly clear. If you simply reflect on the journey we've made together during the seduction. Enoch Drebber is right here, somewhere in this room. So, Mr. Nodohuru, will you do the honors? Yes, of course. Mr. Drebber's hiding place must be the... Safe. Look at all that mess in front of the safe. Yes, plans and, and accounting ledgers. Almost as if someone was in a hurry to empty the contents of the safe, in fact. Oh, whoops. I was just supposed to present it. Before we gained access to the back room, we heard noises from in here. Which tells us that the engineer was still in the building at that point in time. He was in fact searching for the combination to a safe. And pressed for time, made no attempt to write the furniture that he overturned in the process. From which we can deduce that his search for the combination happened very recently indeed. In summary, Mr. Enoch Drebber... is at this very moment inside the safe. I wonder if he can hear all this happening. This concludes Herlock Sholm's great deduction of this topsy-turvy puzzle. Also, how would he have gotten out if he locked himself in? That's crazy. Please let this investigation be almost over. I'm... So tired. So, Mr. Nathuno. I think perhaps it's time we ended this game of hide-and-seek, don't you? By opening the safe, you mean? What else? Let's see, the combination was on a 1... 4, 3, 2, 5, 8, 2. I knew that. Alright then, here goes. Don't make me open it. Just do it automatically, please. Yes! He has both his shoes. You found me. Is he a break dancer? Oh my gosh, this guy's creepy. Right then, sir. Mr. Enoch Drubber, I presume. Correct. You, you better start talking. You tricked Professor Hairbrain with that bogus machine you built. And she'll have to explain the theft of the waxwork from Madame's spells as well. Whilst I would be delighted to answer your many questions. 
Personally, I would advise that you deactivate my little parcel first. Deactivate? Your parcel? I refer, of course, to the time bomb. I left it in the most prominent position. Ah! Ha ha ha. I see. Stunned silence. <sighs> Please don't smile. Oh, stop that. You're all gearing up to die with me then. No! Mr. Sholmes, with only seconds, seven seconds to spare. That was too close for comfort. I've got one foot in the grave already. Are you trying to help us get a killer or get us killed? Mr. Sholmes' deductions can be completely life-altering, can't they? Well, my dear fellows, that was a close shave. The resemblance to an anti-gravity device is really quite startling, I must say. Anti-gravity devices don't exist! Ooh, I wouldn't push it, Mr. Sholmes. No! Okay, I need to see how much is left in this investigation, because uh, my throat hurts. Okay, Drepper's car. No, 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 no. Wooden birdcage. Ba -ba -da -ba. Let's examine those. Updated that. Got the camera. Um. Oh, I didn't examine the lantern. Uh, okay, I examined the shovel. Got the glass. Examine that. Got the science trophy. Um. Crossbow. The, the deduction. Okay. <sighs> it isn't too much longer, so I'll just finish it up. What happened here? What on earth happened in here? You've found me, haven't you? No need to screw me down any further. Everything in here is precisely what it seems. Yeah, well, we'll be giving it a thorough going over. Don't you worry, Trevor. What fails to click with me is how you were able to locate my workshop. That I was not expecting. When I heard whistling from the other room, I knew it was time to bolt. Whistling? Ah, that would have been me. Oh. For some reason, I woke in fine fettle today. No words, just tightly squeezed chips. Clearly, I must have had a screw loose, though, as I couldn't remember the combination for the safe. And another one loose, as I couldn't remember on which piece of furniture I'd written it down. We also found a rope over by the wall. Yes, I had hoped to exit through the skylight, but sadly the rope was too short. So then, I set- So I then set about searching for the combination code to open the safe. I'm burning the incriminating blueprints, don't forget. Regrettably, though, you failed to retrieve the head from the balloon among the rafters. And after that, you hid yourself inside the safe, having first set this parcel ticking. Well, I had no intention of being nailed by the police. There's a lot of awkward phrasing in this, um... In this case. Hmm. Not a death wish, have you? Hiding right by her side a ticking time bomb. Please, why do you suppose I chose to hide inside the safe? It's no ordinary safe, especially designed. A dynamite explosion wouldn't leave a scratch on it. So in fact, the safe was the only safe place. Precisely. But once you climbed inside, you wouldn't have been able to get out again. I invite you to look more closely. The safe is fitted with a handle on the inside to allow the door to be unlocked from within. Ah, so it is. I had always intended to blow this place to smithers in any case. I just wasn't expecting uninvited guests to come along and screw up my plans. Do you- do you mean to say, you are planning to blow up? No, no, that was unforeseen. Wait, is that what he said? You plan to blow us all up. Okay, yeah. What do you mean? Most people run, you see, when they see a ticking time bomb at their feet. Ah. I calculated the time required for a retreat to a safe distance and set the device accordingly. 
but you seemingly endless discourse in here through a spanner in the works. <laughs> Is something wrong, Gregson? Do I have something on my face besides the usual eyes, ears, nose, and mouth? <laughs> Gregson's having none of it. I think we have a fairly good idea of what's been going on here now. But what about the two incidents you've evidently been involved in recently? Professor Harebrain's instantaneous kinesis experiment at the Great Exhibition. And the waxwork model you stole, which this head belongs to. That's no ordinary head, you know. That's the head of the professor. Clad in a mask with a lock so strong, I am unable to unopen it sa I'm unable to open it safely to reveal the killer's identity. I've been considering carrying it around as a protection. After all, that's enough. What's going on here, Gregson? I'm sure you're aware that I've sole jurisdiction to investigate here. Um, yes, well, we prevented the place from blowing up, lady. <laughs> Dr. Scythe again, so the forensic investigation team are here. And you know full well this engineer is a key witness. Why are you allowing this lawyer access to him? If Lord Strongheart knew of this, you'd be finished. You lot, leave at once. My dear madam, there's no need for such a threatening tone, I assure you. After all, that's no way to greet an old acquaintance, is it, Dr. Scythe? Hello, Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes knows Dr. Scythe? If it's protecting the machine next door that's causing such a sour expression on your face, you're quite misguided. It's really nothing more than a shelly. Get out! But of course, we'll show ourselves out our door. We'll show ourselves the door. I see you haven't softened at all. Mr. Nadahudo. Yes? It would appear that our delightfully entertaining investigations have run their course for the day. But, but Mr. Sholmes. Let us leave this place in the doctor's capable hands. I said get out. Now. All of you. Your presence here is not required either, Gregson. Understood. But I'll just say one thing before I head off. If it weren't for this lawyer and his companions, we'd never have found this place, and the whole workshop would have been blown to bits. There was a time bomb set here that this lot disarmed. Inspector. You're welcome. Heh, <laughs> grr, grr. Something giving you a chuckle as a drubber. Pass check. It's really nothing more than the killer from years ago is still alive. Maybe Drebber is the real killer? Hmm. Ah, so sorry. Didn't mean to offend. You're quite right, of course. You did disarm the time bomb, didn't you? Yes, you did disarm that one. Eh? What are you? That one? Yeah, you mean? Ka ka ka. Is another one? <gasps> you, you, because you didn't let us examine the freaking machine. All oh, your fault. All oh, your fault. Get rid of the forensics team. I don't think so, because he said protection. Mm, maybe? It was an hour later that we heard the news of the enormous explosion that ripped through the experimentation stage at the Great Exhibition. Professor Harebrain's invention and all its secrets were blown away forever. All your fault for not letting me investigate, you dumb douchebags. You're not allowed to touch anything. Boo, 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 boo. Well, look where that got us. Police people dead. The ex the whole machine gone. You didn't even get to look at it. No, I bet Courtney did get to look at it, and she'll be like, "Oh, well, your hypothesis is wrong because blood. This was on the machine." And it's like, "Well, I didn't know that, did I?" I have a feeling this next trial 
is going to be so aggravating and infuriating. And Drebber is really creepy. And I don't know if we're going to solve, like, the whole thing with the waxwork model in this trial or if it's going to carry over to the next one. But we shall see. But yeah, I my throat hurts now, so I need to stop talking now and get ready to sleep. So thank you all so much for watching. And like, I'll try to see if I could stream three times next week, but otherwise I'll try to stream twice and hopefully we'll be able to finish this trial soon. Have a jelly snack. Ooh, I do want a jelly snack. Anyways, have a thanks you all so much for watching. Uh, see you next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye bye.